the martyr sacrifices themselves entirely in vain or rather not in vain for they make the selfish more selfish the lazy more lazy the narrow narrower Florence Nightingale Good evening, folks. Uh, tonight is a political night, so we can talk politics. Uh, it's something I necessarily don't really like talking about these days, but I do know people do like it. I think it is important. Uh, in a certain frame of reference. And um, the thing is, anyone can come on and talk about it with me. I think it's actually more for people out there to just kind of vent about the current political system, whether it's in the United States or anywhere else. Um, <clears throat> while we're waiting for people to come on in, uh, let's just kind of go over some things that happened recently. And I will start out with um, uh, Consortium News uh, today at... 2 p.m. Eastern Time. They uh, had a audio interview with Kim.com, and then there's three separate clips. And um, Bill Binney was in as a guest, talking along with uh, Joe Laria and Elizabeth Voss. And there was also uh, Sam uh, George Samzuli. I, I hope I pronounced his name right. Um, Talking about the whole thing. It's very great. There's actually some new information here. Um, there's also Mike Gravel uh, at the beginning um, who didn't get to be in the Democratic debates. And uh, we'll talk about the Democrats and the Republicans. Let's not leave the Republicans out. Why do I don't want, why do I not want to leave the Republicans out? Well, uh, you would think an opposition party to the Democrats because, I mean, it seems like every goal for every Republican is to control the, the uh, judiciary, the uh, Senate, and the House, um, as well as the um, presidency. Did I say that correctly? Uh, anyways. But you will see that not just the Republicans, but conservative news outlets, conservative, conservative media... Um, they used to report on the Seth Rich, right? Here's Breitbart back in 2017. Fox News, Seth Rich murdered DNC staffer, leaked thousands of internal emails to WikiLeaks. Well, what happened to uh, a lot of this material that's out there for the public? Well, let's see. Update. Fox News has since issued a retraction for the report that Rich leaked thousands of internal emails to WikiLeaks. And if you go ahead and click on it, what do you see from Fox News? Oh, uh, that's it. Well, what are you going to do? Uh, they don't care. They, they would go along with the democratic narrative, I guess, but they don't <laughs> about the, uh, Russian Russia gate hacking. And, uh, it's just very peculiar to me. I think it's just very, very weird. Um, and let me just make sure I've got the chime for people to come in so I know that they're there. <clears throat> and, um, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's like, remember the, uh, the saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> well, these days, I guess the enemy of my enemy is my enemy. Uh, but I have a feeling that the, uh, the Democrats aren't necessarily the Republicans' enemy. They're just kind of along for the ride, you know. They're just uh, uh, partners in crime. Because I figured if you if if you have a criminal, you want to be friendly with the cops. If you got the cops and uh, the criminals all on the same side, well, you got yourself uh, um, what do you call that? 
Um, it's like the Godfather. Man, so many flies in the basement. It's so humid in here. All right. Um, you got yourself a... Uh, what do you call it? I don't know. It's bad. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, and here's... Here's the, I mean, there's so much to revisit. I mean, uh, and that's that's what it does. And um, I mean, when they're when we get constant updates of of what's going on, you know, and you get people um, who are just well versed in in what has been going on. And what's funny is when I watch, uh, like for example, I mean, what are you gonna say when Bill Binney, who's the um, here you go. He knows this story. Former technical director at the NSA talking about it. And um, you can't really discount it. And then what the thing is on the chats, because I'm monitoring chats, is a lot of people didn't know about a lot of the information that was just regurgitated on today's episode. And, uh, and a lot of things that people still don't realize is, I mean... The, here's here's the thing that aired and people um either forget it or they don't even think about it in any context and i'll play it back donald trump has had a disastrous few weeks if you look at the polls he needs a miracle um in the american political lexicon there's such a thing as the october surprise the stuff that you're sitting on is is an october surprise in there we do you even know what you're sitting on WikiLeaks never sits on material. Uh, our whistleblowers go to significant efforts to get us material and often very significant risks. As a 27-year-old who uh, works for the DNC, who was shot in the back, murdered uh, just two weeks ago uh, for un unknown reasons as he was walking down the street in Washington. So that was, that was just a robbery, I believe, wasn't it? No, it's, there's no finding. So uh, that's what are you the suggesting? Sort of, what are you suggesting? What, I'm suggesting that our sources uh, take risks and they, are, they become concerned uh, to see things occurring uh, like that. But was he one uh, of your sources then? I mean... We don't comment on who our sources but are. Why but why make the suggestion about a young guy being shot in the streets of Washington? Because uh, we have to understand uh, how high the stakes are uh, in the United States and that our sources are... You know, our sources face serious risks. Uh, that's why they come to us, so we can protect uh, their anonymity. Uh, but it's quite and, something to suggest a murder. Sorry. That's basically what you're doing. Well, that others have have suggested that uh, we are investigating to understand uh, what happened uh, in that situation with Seth Rich. I think it is uh, a concerning situation. I, there's not a conclusion yet. We wouldn't be willing to um, state a conclusion, but we are concerned about it. And more importantly, um, a variety of WikiLeaks sources are concerned when that kind of thing happens. All right, plenty of uh, plenty of interesting stuff uh, that you can revisit. It's still Donald out there. Donald Trump has had. Um, and if you go to certain outlets, they will no longer report uh, a specific narrative of actual reporting that was done in the past. They had to retract that reporting. And um, I just have to say, you know, if, if you are a supporter of Julian Assange, of WikiLeaks, um, of Seth Rich, uh, I mean, if you are supporting anyone in the Democratic Party right now, whether it's Elizabeth Warren, whether it's uh, Bernie Sanders, whether it's um, Tulsi Gabbard, and you're just telling people, hey, this candidate needs to raise this much money, etc., which, of course, the donations are donations, right? I mean, how can certain people forget the things that were said? in the entire dnc fraud lawsuit and i mean 
you can't you can't neglect what happened i i just uh, don't understand it i, I think uh, a lot of people probably um don't understand it and probably don't agree with with it uh they're probably just waiting to see just like last time hey let's just wait and see what happens and let's just wait and see what happens and uh we're getting to the point where you can't wait anymore i mean if you wait uh, more sacrifices are going to be made and they're going to be made in vain you've got a chance now to just say hey uh, nothing changed since the 2016 DNC fraud from the the reveals that were made by WikiLeaks, by Julian Assange, most likely provided by Seth Rich. And you know what? We're not going to give you guys any more money. Why do we want to do that? Donations are donations. It doesn't matter. If it goes to this candidate or another candidate, it all boils down to going to the DNC anyway. Um, and then uh, you would think of all the hate that Donald Trump has. Uh, I wouldn't say it's even hate. It's it's faux hate. It's not really. It's more of acting. This guy's an actor. Um, he doesn't want the DNC to go down. I mean, because then he'd have to actually have um, a real contest against some, a bunch of people who are serious about their commitment to, I guess, policies in the United States uh, and voters who really are adamant about changing the way the system is, is ran and the way that politics is being done. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, um, it's the, the chance is now, I mean, we've never had a greater chance and even with the crackdown made by certain media platforms like YouTube, which, uh, they did something funky with my, uh, live streaming and I had to reconnect. And that's why if you saw me on Periscope or D live, I had to redo it. Um, they're doing some funky stuff. I don't know what it is, but I mean, at least people are, are still able to, to view, um, videos and live streams, whether it's moving towards blockchain type of, uh, platforms. And we don't know how, how long that may even last. Um, but a lot of that it's, it's still about trying to get people connected and, uh, all right. Uh, we got some people in Shirley. How are you doing? You got to come on in. Uh, you uh, can definitely easily fill me in with all that's going on with the debates, which I think is just a ruckus anyway. And uh, let's see. Let's go to the chat. All right. Hi, Grant Jarvis. Uh, they will not get a dime from me, says Shirley Vick. Uh, Grant Jarvis, remember that WikiLeaks may have had two sources for leaks? Yeah, um, and I think a, a lot of that right now it points to Aaron Rich, which is Seth Rich's brother, but we don't know that 100%. I mean, I think that that is a good case because if you are going to do something like this, you need someone that you trust, and it's either going to be one of Seth Rich's friends or his brother and um i think it's gonna be one of those two options i mean he's not gonna trust someone that he does who's not like a real friend that he knew for years within the dnc he's just not gonna do that so that's probably gonna have to be um someone close that he trusts so that is one uh, idea uh surely vic did they shut down unity for j the hashtag um i think they has they they took down the, the twitter account for unity for j a week ago and it took a few days for them to get it back and um that's as much as i know about that is WikiLeaks offline hold on oh man Oh, uh, maybe it's, 
Oh, wow. A certificate. Uh, details. Oh. Well, that's a little... That's... Uh, so people don't know what I'm, I'm doing. I should probably show you guys. That's news in itself. Well, a good catch there. Um, Grant. All right. So, yeah. WikiLeaks.org. Uh, HTTPS. Uh, potential security issues. Firefox. Uh, website certificate expired. Uh, I guess they can update their security. Um, oh, my, my clock is set correctly. And that's weird. Yeah, my clock is set correctly. Uh, I guess we'd have to... Ah, uh, no, that's that. They had to fix their certificate or we'd have to export in. Uh, we wouldn't export in. Uh, we would have to. I don't know. It's weird. <sighs> Extensions. Identifier. Um, hmm. There's a lot here. I mean, we could probably try um, a mirror. Mirror.wikileaks.org. Uh, let's see. I think they're all going to be the same. Can you guys... Oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hmm. Certificate policies. Uh, certificate signature. No. All right. Well, I should probably share the desktop, huh? Let's uh, let's look at what you guys are saying. Uh, no other leaker may have. No. Okay. So Grant Jefferson is saying other leaker may have been NSA. I mean. I mean, I don't know anybody from the NSA unless, I don't know. I've got no clue as to anyone else. And um, let's see. All right, Shirley, you'll be on in a little bit. That's great. I don't like doing this alone. <laughs> At least not politics and stuff like that because I don't follow a lot of things. I used to, right? Uh, I mean, that's how I got started. But um it's like, uh, as much as things change, things don't really change. Uh, but I think I think uh, what what has gone on in the past, as as far as me, um, I changed a little bit, um, or quite a lot, however way you want to look at it, and uh, realized what I was in it for was exactly what I was in it for, for today, but just a, it's not about me really. It's really about all of us. Uh, you, me, family, friends, and, um, all of us. And, uh, I think it just takes a little bit of a push, right? Of, uh, just saying, um, what we got to do. And I, I think when you see people out there, it's like, hey, regardless of what happens, this person doesn't seem to care. It's like the threat of death. This person's doing it anyway because it's the right thing. And uh, I think that type of bravery that we've seen, that type of sacrifice that we've seen um, is contagious in a good way. And I think... Uh, we just need to keep expanding on that. And the more is starting to get revealed in many ways, not just in uh, in political atmospheres, not just in esoteric and occult atmospheres, not just from spiritual consciousness uh, 
or even I've seen people who play video games who just uh, watch movies and entertainment and people who um, study martial arts and uh, they're just kind of opening their eyes and waking up to seeing that a lot of the stuff that's been occurring uh, in the past has just been all lies. It's all been fake. And um, it's very cool to see everyone just kind of uh, waking up to that. And why does it do that? Um, all right. So that should fix my audio a little bit. Let's see. Assange does not have access to the Internet. I do not know why they shut it down. That's a good question. Um, let me check on Twitter to see. And I pretty sure Twitter would block it but there's certain people that follow um, let's see um, where's the dark mode <coughs> is there a dark mode yes no not promote mode oh man all right, lights out. There you go. Usually I don't have that on mine. And you guys are in the dark, so might as well. All right, let's see what they have on um, uh, WikiLeaks. All right. Let's do the latest. Okay, it looks like there are uh, people noticing it. I don't, I don't know. That's because the error that we go. Oh, uh, yeah, it's just a, um, I don't know by SSL. It's just like a certificate uh, expiration. Usually that happens. But uh, whoever's managing the servers for WikiLeaks should have, at least the uh, um, domain should have realized uh, the DNS should have realized the certificate was expiring and get that handled it happens quite often a lot on um, business websites and stuff like that um, I don't think it's gonna be a big worry but we don't know uh, let's look at WikiLeaks and see what they have to say um, they haven't tweeted anything really uh, so they could have blocked WikiLeaks, but I, I doubt it. Um, although it's happened before, I think. Hmm. But would they block uh, certain people within WikiLeaks? Um, let's see. Mm, when was that? Oh, all right. Let's see. Uh, how about? Hmm. Don't see much there. How about uh, uh as uh, he nothing recently. I mean, he doesn't seem to tweet very much, huh? Hmm. Uh, right. I don't know. Uh, that's pretty interesting there. Uh, thanks for that heads up. All right. Uh, let's see. Wow, it's slow at night. Um, let's go back to the chat. 
Kirk Murray tweet, ex-UK diplomat Kirk Murray claims that the DNC and Podesta files were from two different leakers, both Americans, and it hints that the former were from a DNC insider and the latter from someone in intelligence or law enforcement. See his interview with Scott Horton, excuse me, December 2016, tried to send you a link via Twitter, but no luck. Um, all right, let's see. Ah. Well, might as well uh, go ahead and watch it while we're waiting on people to come on in. Okay, Whew, 27 minutes. That's a lot to listen to. Eh, heck, we got time. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and then listen to it, huh? Uh, not many views. 350 views? You would think there'd be more on it. Uh, let's give him a little bit more. Uh, let's go subscribe there. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute, in, uh, mute myself and take myself off. Hey, all Scott Horton show. I'm him. Check out the archives at scotthorton.org and at libertarianinstitute.org slash Scott Horton show and sign up for the podcast feed there as well. All right. So the deal is, man, we're raising money for the Libertarian Institute. It's me, the great Will Grigg, the heroic Sheldon Richman and the wonderful <laughs> Jared LaBelle. Um, it's a great little institute we got over there. Uh, we are reliably anti-everything libertarians at the Libertarian Institute. Uh, I'm the foreign policy guy, Will Grigg, the cops, Sheldon, history, economics, everything. Uh, Jared's great on taxes and uh, helping to run the thing. And so far, it's been a real success. And uh, we plan on having a hell of a year next year with our new Libertarian Institute. But we need your help to do it. Simple as that. So if this is the kind of thing that you believe in and want to help support, then please do. We're at libertarianinstitute.org slash support. You can get books. You can get silver coins. You can enter a raffle right now to win a two-week permaculture course in the rainforest of Costa Rica. Seriously, you got to play for the, pay for the plane ticket, but the rest is on them. Um, learn all about it and write it off on your taxes. LibertarianInstitute.org slash support. Check it out. Thank you. All right, y'all. Introducing Craig Murray. He is the former British ambassador to Uzbekistan and uh, famously a whistleblower on uh, America's extraordinary rendition program with that uh, torture dictatorship back when. Um, and now he's got this very important piece at CraigMurray.org.uk. It's called The CIA's Absence of conviction. Welcome to the show. How are you doing, Craig? Very well, thank you, Scott. Very well. Uh, good, good. I really appreciate you joining us on the show today. And this is a very important thing uh, that you've written here. The context is, of course, the CIA's claim to the Washington Post that the Russians ran an op to hack the Democrats' emails. Uh, I guess that goes for the DNC and the Podesta emails to leak them to WikiLeaks in order to help Donald Trump win the election. And to a degree that I think is actually sort of surprising to me, um, this story seems to really have legs in there. Even the Electoral College is now saying they want a briefing. I don't think they really would dare to try to overturn the results of the election, but they're at least trying to use this to hem in Trump on his Russia policy, as Greg Sargent reported in The Washington Post. And yet uh, what you've written here and what you told The Guardian was, hold it right there. This isn't right at all. But how can you know? Um, well, it's not really new. I mean, the people who are in a position to know are WikiLeaks and, and the people who work with WikiLeaks, of, of, of which I am one. And, um, you know, Julian Assange has said very plainly that the Information does not come from Russia. He, he's uh, said that straight out. Uh, and, you know, I have 
first-hand knowledge that the source of the leaks was not Russian and was not any kind of proxy for the Russian government. Uh, it's an American source. So, really, the CIA, who have offered no evidence whatsoever for this anonymously beat claim, um, uh, the, the CIA just talking complete and utter nonsense, um, you know, just no for certain that what they say is not true. Mm. Okay, well now, first of all, can you explain uh, what exactly is your role with WikiLeaks? Um, oh, well, I'm not, I should say, I'm not a member of WikiLeaks staff. They, they have staff, they, they have directors. I'm not uh, any of those, but I'm uh, a member of uh, Sam Adams Associates and of other Wiki, uh, whistleblower organizations which work very closely with WikiLeaks. And I've been close to Julian for a number of years, and I'm I'm one of the people who you know is able to visit him in the Ecuadorian embassy and uh, and speak with him and, and discuss strategies and help move things along. So I cooperate with WikiLeaks without being a formal member of the structure. I see. And then um, can you tell us how it is that you know who the source is? Is it just that Assange told you or you have more direct information yourself? No, I have um, rather more uh, direct information uh, than that, uh, which relates to a visit I paid to Washington uh, in September of this year. Um, when I, and as I should be plain, that the uh, Podesta emails and the DNC emails, of course, two two separate things, and you shouldn't conclude that both have uh, the same source. Uh, but in, in, in both cases, we're talking of a leak, not a hack, in that the person who, uh, you know, the person who was responsible for getting the information out had legal access to that information. Mm -hmm. And then a, a trip to Washington, are you saying that you were the recipient of at least one of these leaks? Uh, no, the, um, uh, the material was... Uh, already, uh, I think safely with WikiLeaks before I, I, uh, I before I got there in in, in September, um, I um, had a small role to play, which I, I hope you'll understand if I don't uh, <laughs> expand on it too much. Sure, no, I do understand. I hope you understand if I keep trying to push a little bit to to try to understand what's going on here. I read a a post by my friend George Washington over there, uh, George Washington's blog, and he put two and two together in a couple of statements and said, um, and I guess comparing your statements with uh, those of the uh, famous NSA whistleblower William Binney, that uh, when you say this was a leak, I think George Washington's blog's conclusion there was that that meant a leak from the inside of the American intelligence community, although I guess the way I read your statement, it possibly could just be a Democrat or a member of the Democratic National Committee or someone who had access through that route. Um, and again, I'm not exactly sure whether we're talking about the Podesta or the DNC leak or one or both here. Uh, as you say, they are uh, at least presumably separate. But can you uh, give us any insight on, on whether, for example, you can confirm Benny's claim that this comes from inside American police and intelligence uh, rather than uh, inside the political apparatus like the DNC? Um, well, I think, you know, again, the, the key point to remember in answering that question is that the uh, DNC leak and the Podesta leak are two different things, and the answer is very probably not going to be the same in both cases. I also want you to consider, you know, that John Podesta uh, was a paid lobbyist for the Saudi government. That, that's open and declared. It's not. It's not a secret or a leak in a sense. Uh, you know, John Podesta was paid a very substantial sum every month by the Saudi government to lobby for their interest uh, in Washington. And uh, if the American security services uh, were not uh, watching the communications of the Saudi government's paid lobbyists, then the American intelligence services would not be doing their job. Uh, and, of course, it's also true that the uh, Saudi's man, the Saudi's lobbyist in, in Washington, his communications uh, are going to be of interest to a great many other intelligence services as well. 
Hey, y'all, Sky here for Rye Guys t-shirts. Rye Guys, that's W-R-Y, guys.com. Great, irreverent, thought-provoking t-shirts upholding a pro-freedom perspective. Inspired by such classic humorists as Mark Twain, H.L. Mencken, and Oscar Wilde, they invoke the wit and wisdom of the past to satirize modern myths. These high-quality shirts for men and women look good and feel good, and they make great gifts. Use the coupon code SCOTT for 15% off. Rye Guys t-shirts at ryguys.com. That's W-R-Y, guys.com. Isn't that interesting? So, um, sorry, I hope I'm not being too annoying here. I'm trying to read between the lines. It sounded like your first answer was, well, maybe uh, one is one and the other is the other, meaning one came from inside the intelligence services and the other maybe came from a political source. And then your illusion, I think, was to, well, geez, the NSA and then must have been looking at what Panetta was doing since he was operating as a registered agent of a foreign power. Um, it, it, is it fair to say that you're saying that the Podesta elite came from inside the intelligence services, NSA, or another agency? Well, I think what I, what I said was certainly compatible with that kind of interpretation, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very polite. I appreciate that. Um, all right. And now, so... Um, is it the case that you can you can say you know in the in terms of the DNC leak as well? Um, it's the case. I mean, what what I I can say to you is that I know what WikiLeaks have. You know, I know what I know from WikiLeaks uh, on um, uh, on the DNC case, um, and I believe. Uh, Julian, who I've known for many, many years, and he flat out says it's nothing to do with the Russians. Um, so that's, uh, but I I have never, um, you know, I, I don't have direct uh, personal access uh, to the source or anything like that. I wouldn't like to, to pretend that I did. Mm-hmm. But in both of these cases, you're saying that this is, these are leaks from, Americans, too. Um, I I saw this as part of what you said to The Guardian was if these people were acting as Russian agents, they'd be in jail right now. Yeah, exactly. In in both cases, uh, they are leaks by Americans. Now, it's it's perfectly possible uh, that um, WikiLeaks themselves uh, don't know precisely what is what is going on. I, I mean, one thing which I'm sure everybody noticed, was that Julian Assange took you know, a very close interest in, in um, the death of uh, Seth Rich, uh, the Democratic staff member, and WikiLeaks offered a, a, a 20,000 reward for information uh, leading to the um, capture of his killers. Um, so obviously there are suspicions there about what's happening, and, 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 and things are somewhat... Murky. I'm not saying. Don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm not saying that he was the source of, of the leaks. Uh, what I'm saying is that, that um, it, it's probably not a, an unfair indication to draw that, that WikiLeaks believe uh, that he may have been killed by someone who thought he was the source of the leaks. Whether correctly or incorrectly. Whether correctly or incorrectly. But you're, are you saying that Assange says that he is not the source, but that maybe someone mistook him for the source, or he just is not saying either way? No, Assange has not, said, has not clarified that, that either way. But, you know, obviously the fear that he may have been killed has something to do with these leaks, possibly by someone who thought he was the source, um, is a motivation. Yeah. Well... I think that occurred to a lot of people, but of course it's the kind of thing that is easily dismissed as conspiracism as well. That's also true. Uh, but people uh, you know, do die over this sort of stuff. You have to remember that there were billions of dollars, literally billions of dollars, uh, behind um, Hillary Clinton's election campaign, and <laughs> those people have lost their money. Uh, and you have also to remember that the there's a big financial interest, to give them the armaments industry, uh, in a bad American relationship with Russia. I mean, the worse the relationship with 
Russia is, the larger contracts the armaments industry can expect, especially in the most high-tech, high-profit uh, side of fighter jets and missiles and, 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 and that kind of thing. And, and Trump has actually already indicated he's looking to make savings uh, on the defense budget, particularly in things like uh, fighter projects. Um, so there are people standing to lose billions of of dollars, and anybody who thinks in that situation bad things don't happen to people uh, is, is very naive. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, if we can go off on this tangent for a second, would you like to comment on the relative danger of the new Cold War with Russia at this point, Craig? Um, yeah, I'm. I mean, I find it um, very worrying, frankly, that that people want to get into a a, a new Cold War with Russia. Um, I am no fan of Putin. I'm, I'm, I'm a, a critic of Putin's internal policy. I, I, I think his um, a control of the media and the shutting down of a lot of independent media in Russia has, has really uh, undermined uh, the sort of uh, the start of democracy which we'd seen in that country. Um, I'm, so I'm, 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 I'm not a big fan of Putin. I, I, I don't like the oligarch system where wealth is even more concentrated in Russia than it is in the in in, in the West. Um, but the idea that we want to go back into a a system where we regard Russia as an enemy and we we have these fantasies about a war with Russia uh, and is absolutely crazy. There's no way that Russia is ever going to attack the United States or the United Kingdom. Russia's got no interest whatsoever in doing that. Where, where Putin has shown some foreign policy adventurism is in bringing back into Russia parts of the former Soviet Union which have a majority Russian ethnic population. Um, I, that's not a name I, I support. I think that's been dangerous and disruptive. Uh, but he's almost finished that. Um, and there aren't really any more, uh, very few more parts of the former Soviet Union with a majority ethnic uh, population. He's essentially achieved what he wanted to achieve. But there's no evidence that he's looking for further land acquisition for Russia. Um, and in in Syria, frankly, his policy appears more sensible than the Western policy, where, where, where the West is promoting you know, jihadists who... Uh, support the Saudi exported uh, Wahhabist doctrine. So um, I I just don't see that we have this profound conflict of interest with Russia, uh, which necessitates a new Cold War and a new arms race. I'm sorry, that was rather a long answer to give you. Yeah, no, that's kind of what I was looking for because um, well, I'm glad you brought up the the question about the minority Russian speaking populations in the Baltic states, for example, and that kind of thing. Because, I mean, you know, people do seem to think that that that's a real problem. But you're saying that uh, the threat of any real conflict there that the Russians are going to try to redraw those borders or something like that 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 basically this is all negotiable and it's already been negotiated. Yeah, I think that's. That's true. And the places where Putin has um, taken action, um, like an an enclave in Georgia and in the Crimea, are places which have a a majority Russian population, not a minority Russian population. There's no evidence that that he's daft enough to try to to move into areas which only have a minority Russian population. Um, And he's not mad enough to attack the European Union. You know, that's that's definitely not going to happen, um, or, or to attack NATO. So uh, a, a, an awful lot of this saber-rattling is, is much to do about nothing, but as I say, it's extremely profitable for the armaments industry. Right. Yeah, well, no question about that. All right, so now, um, well, what do you make of all the CIA claims about, well, you have Guccifer here, GRU, and FSB, and they're hacking here, and they're fishing there, and... Uh, that they've traced all of this stuff. Is this all just made up out of whole cloth, do you think? Well, I I think the Gusa thing thing is is hilarious. I mean, Gusa is not the source uh, for WikiLeaks. Um, And the idea that the Russian uh, FSB would, you know, carefully hack 
these emails and then have this vainglorious weirdo personality boasting about it all over the internet and using civilic script uh, is just not at all probable when you think about it. The Russians are a great deal more professional than that. Um, yes, uh, of course, the Russians spy on the United States. The United States spies on the Russians. The United States spies on the British and the Germans as well. Um, um, they, that's part of the game of international politics and international diplomacy. Nobody's saying that the Russians don't spy on the United States. They, they, they do. It's, uh, it, it's uh, an ongoing mutual game that's always been part of human history, I suppose. Um, but it so happens that, that they are not the people... Uh, who hacked this particular material and passed it on uh, to WikiLeaks. And then, um, well, so what about, uh, you know, all the stuff about the GRU phishing email and all of that? Is that just uh, something that happened but is unconnected to the leaks themselves is what you're saying? Well, a phishing email happened. Whether it was definitely from the GRU, I, I have, have my doubts. But it's not, but it's not the source of the leak. Gotcha. All right. Well, um, you know, I wish I was a little bit uh, more proficient on the technical aspects of all this kind of stuff, so I could try to come up with some better questions to ask along those lines. But it sounds like, well, really, what you're saying, certainly on at least half of of what's at issue here, that you personally know one, and on the second. You know what Assange told you, and and in that case, you certainly believe him. And in both cases, the DNC leak and the Podesta leak, you're saying both sources are not hacks, but insider leaks and Americans in both cases. Yeah. If you're looking for the source of all this, uh, you have to look to Americans. And it's, you know, it's worth saying that if um, Hillary Clinton hadn't, connived with the DNC to fix the primary schedule in order to disadvantage Bernie Sanders, if she hadn't accepted questions in advance of uh, televised debates against Bernie in order to give her an unfair advantage, if the Clinton Foundation hadn't accepted donors from all kinds of dictators in exchange for access to meetings in the State Department or foreign policy decisions or purchase of uranium or whatever else they wanted in exchange, if, if all that hadn't happened, then we wouldn't be talking about any of this. Um, one, of the, one of the very peculiar things is that the, the mainstream media is still completely in denial about, the, about all those stories I just told you, which mostly weren't much featured in the mainstream media. Um, and yet at the same time, they're saying that these emails, which were Russian, affected the election. Uh, it, it's quite strange. The emails can't be totally unimportant and meaningless right. and at the same time have affected the election. Right. Yeah, all they did was show how business is done on a daily basis inside the Democratic Party and the Clinton campaign. Uh, you know, why why would that do anything but help Hillary Clinton's chances? Right. <laughs> well, 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 exactly. I, I think um, you know, lots of people were um, uh, surprised by, for example, the extent of media uh, collusion, which went beyond the course. You know, journalists keep up their contacts and that kind of things. But discussing, you know, how to present stories to best political advantage of a political candidate and that, and, and that kind of thing is 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 out with ethical journalism. I, I I think those emails are an absolutely fascinating glance uh, into the way politics operates in Washington. I think it's not very pretty, and I actually think it says a very great deal for the sophistication of the American voter. Uh, that, that they did have such a profound effect on so many people, and people are capable of, of understanding and analyzing what's going on and, and reacting to it. Mm -hmm. All right, so now, because of this whole controversy, I mean, they're really trying to, in a sense, as I was saying at the introduction here, uh, they're trying to really uh, undermine the incoming presidency of Donald Trump. I mean, Hillary has said she concedes we have to accept the result, but at the same time she's saying, oh yeah, she supports the CIA giving a briefing to the Electoral College. I guess just trying to cause trouble, that kind of thing. But so it raises the question of whether 
the source, uh, one or both sources, might just as well come forward at this point and say, it was me, not them. It wasn't the Russians. I'm not a Russian. I did this because I'm a Bernie fan or whatever it was. Uh, do you think that there's any chance of that at this point, that the, the sources, source or sources might change their mind and come forward? Well, I can't, I can't know. But the whole Obama-Clinton attitude to whistleblowers, you know, the way that very good patriotic Americans like Thomas Drake and uh, uh, William Binney and John Kiriakou have been, have been treated, the way that Chelsea Manning is treated, the way that Edward Snowden is still in exile, um, doesn't actually encourage anybody to come forward. And, and the doubt hovering around the death of Seth Rich doesn't encourage anybody to come forward either. So I, 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 mean, I, I wouldn't... Um, Myself lean on anyone to uh, to come out because the I know I know as a whistleblower myself that the consequences for you and your family are are extreme. So so I think that's a decision people have to be left to make privately. Yep. All right. Well, listen. Thank you very much for coming on the show, Craig. I really appreciate it a lot. Uh, thank you. It's it's always good to talk. All right, y'all. That is Craig Murray, uh, formerly the ambassador, the British ambassador to Uzbekistan and a whistleblower in his own right. And uh, now, as he says, he works uh, on a somewhat sort of consulting basis with WikiLeaks, and he writes at craigmurray.org.uk, craigmurray.org.uk. This one is called The CIA's Absence of Conviction, and we're running about half of it, little splash page thing today at the Libertarian Institute as well, if you want to... All right, that was an interview back in uh, December 13, 2016 by uh, Scott Horton uh, with Craig Murray. And I, I do vaguely remember that Craig Murray was, um, I think he was on the Unity for j um, which I may have to revisit. Let's see. Um, all right, let's look at the chat real quick. And again, uh, please, if you guys want to talk, uh, come on in. It's uh, the description box. We'll have the information to join in on Zoom, so you could go ahead and talk about it. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So Grant Jarvis was saying, uh, if Seth Rich is one leaker in murder, then Assange can't talk about leaks for sake of second leaker. Yeah, um, makes sense there. And Susie Greer, all I can say is I was subscribed to Seth Rich. I didn't know him. I was just a follower, but about five videos were sent out by him. Didn't recognize the Australian accent on the video as Julian's on the videos. Hmm. I don't know what those are. Uh, all right. Um, and I was when I was listening in to uh, the Scott Horton show, and you know, I think I might want to see if I could reach out to him and if I could um, interview him. He'll probably say no, but you know what? You won't know until you ask, right? <clears throat> so um, uh, the thing is, he's libertarian, and I think what I would love... Uh, hi, Eric. How's it going? Um, <clears throat> what I would love... Uh, is for libertarians to start voting libertarian <laughs> stop uh voting republican because thinking that you're not going to have a libertarian um as a president or a congressman well you obviously aren't going to have a libertarian in uh congress if you vote republican and I would say the same thing for people who are um, for the Green Party. Stop voting for uh, the Democrats if you want uh, the Green Party um, to get in Congress or as the president. As, I mean, it's more of a long shot for the Green Party than it is for the Libertarian Party to get a president in right now. But, uh, hey, long shots happen, right? So, uh, the thing is, I would say if you are, <clears throat> and especially commentators out there, political commentators, I don't, I know you guys are excited for Bernie 2.0 or Tulsi Gabbard or Elizabeth Warren or whoever, 
But you know what? You guys know what the DNC did in 2016. You guys know how they didn't change. They actually changed for the worst. They just actually made it harder for all that to happen again. And um, all you guys are, all I see on Twitter, <laughs> I don't watch the videos, but all I see on Twitter is, hey, this person is great. Let's give her money and our support. What? How did that happen? <clears throat> and um, uh, let's see. I would say, you know, that's pretty much it. I mean, if you don't want the sacrifice of uh, individuals who are actually uh, exposing their corruption um, to have made their sacrifices in vain, then, well, I would say don't vote for a Republican. Don't vote for a Democrat. Vote for an independent. Vote for a Green Party. Vote for a Libertarian. And I've actually been saying that for years now. Um for me, I don't vote. I just go and get, uh, <laughs> I, I'm an anarchist, so therefore I'm not going to vote, but I know it's important for people uh, to vote if they want to. And I am all in support of people who do want to vote and, um, Christian. Oh my goodness. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, Christian's in the house. Uh, he says you shouldn't give a dime to DNC or RNC. Oh yeah. Uh, Christian is is typically always right so uh yeah don't give a dime to him um you're not gonna get what you want it's just a money sink I and I think um if I was just the uh the puppeteer behind the DNC I would say look the way to get a lot of money for the DNC is to get a whole bunch of candidates out there People will donate, have them make a certain amount of money um, to make it into the debates. And if they don't have that money, they don't make the debates. But basically, that makes sure that the DNC gets the money for whoever is the primary candidate to go against Donald Trump in 2020. And the thing is, your biggest money makers is still in your you've got it in your bag, which is Hillary Clinton. She she can raise a lot of money. And um, I think a great case is to be made by the DNC to people who donated in 2016 to Hillary Clinton and the DNC that, hey, the stuff that happened in 2016, it's not going to happen again. We've got Julian Assange. We're taking down WikiLeaks. We're, we've made sure that independents can't run in the, in the DNC. We, we put a new chairperson uh, within the DNC. It's not Debbie Wasserman Schultz, but you know what? Debbie Wasserman Schultz is, is still um, part of uh, Congress, got reelected, and is going to help with the DNC campaigns. And uh, Florida is a very, very important state, uh, battleground state for voters for uh, presidential elections. And therefore, you, we still have that. Um, and, and so you've got you've got a whole lot of things you could tell um, the people who donate max amounts. And uh, therefore, you know, it's I think it's it's you've got you've got a lot of. Uh, a ways to make money for the DNC because I think they're going to need it. I, I don't think the DNC is raising enough money uh, if money makes a difference uh, to defeat Donald Trump. It didn't make a difference in 2016, that was for sure. Hillary Clinton outraised Donald Trump quite a bit and she still lost. <sighs> uh, MAGA, Zog failure, ending the Private health insurance industry would get struck down by federal judges in all 50 states and then Supreme Court. Yeah, let's see that happen. We'll know who those judges are. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, Grant Jarvis, Hillary will steal a lot of other candidates' money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she'll raise a lot of money. On All these candidates have, uh, have raised money for her. I mean... Uh, what do you think Hillary Clinton's going to do when he she met with all the other Democratic candidates? She's saying, hey, here's a piece of advice, how to raise money, et cetera, et cetera. Or maybe they talk about grandkids um, or maybe 
that she was saying, look, um, we want you to run, raise as much money as you can. Um, I'm going to come in late because, you know, if I come in early, my um, favorability ratings always get lower and lower. So the later I get into the race, the better it is. And you know what? If I win, you have a great position within the United, within my cabinet. And I think that's probably what's going to happen. All these, uh, a lot of these Democratic candidates are jumping in saying, hey, you know, I, I'm a long shot to become uh, president, especially the nominee for the Democratic Party. But you know what? If I raise enough money, I'll probably get a cabinet position if Hillary Clinton becomes president. Oh, yeah, Christian, I think Clinton is going to sweep in in the last minute. She'll be the savior to the Democratic Party. Uh, I've been saying that before H.A. Goodman, but H.A. Goodman, he follows in on everything that's going on. And yeah, he's got a good point. Susie Greer, this to me told me he was probably getting rid of important information that was important. Um, I don't know. Let's see. DNC is just like political whorehouse for money. This thing goes with the RNC. Come on in, you guys. Eric, Christian. Uh, you guys, you guys. I mean, I, I want to know what's been going on lately because I, uh, again, I, I tell everybody, I, I can't, one person can't know everything. Uh, there's just too much junk in that, in that, um, in that head of, of every person. Um, and plus, just not enough, um, uh, I guess, <clears throat> I don't know. There's just not enough where I can have my, uh, um, uh, I guess sources that I could look at. I mean, I didn't even know about the Scott Horton show or, and, uh, his interview with Craig Murray. And that's thanks to Grant Jarvis, you know, uh, having people in communicating and, and, uh, and telling people, Hey, you should listen to this or you should watch this. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I think it's good. Um, <laughs> MAGA Zog failure. Don't, I mean, you're MAGA, right? Let I me mean, make America great again. Why wouldn't you want Hillary to, to win the Democratic Party? She lost big time in 2016. You want her to go against Donald Trump, just like she wanted Donald Trump to run against her. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Christian, I remember you saying that way back. That's why you asked. Yeah, I think uh, all... I just, as I think it, I just think of it as as a strategic type of maneuver, and um, money and uh, public perception, uh, it's all it's all kind of intertwined. It's, you got to sell it, right? If if you if you can't sell the product on its own merit, you have to prop it up, and what we're seeing is the propping up of the product and that product is going to be hillary clinton 2.0 or is it 3.0 <laughs> um so therefore um that's what i see i see um no no one's buying it no one's buying the product within um any of the democrats um but they're going to be sold on it once hillary clinton gets in she's going to finally break that glass ceiling third time's a charm um we and then uh all the all the gun violence that's been occurring none of the democratic candidates are really strict on guns but do you know who is hillary clinton and um who's really fighting the, the ice agents and things like that uh and donald trump well it's hillary clinton hillary clinton it all points to hillary clinton all the time <clears throat> and um what we we here's another prediction it's not really a prediction it's just kind of a all right this is where my mind's going i'm going with it uh you've got remember the green party like the green party right now they don't seem to have a candidate to run for 2020 which is pretty pretty sad right now you would think that they would have one or they might do what jill stein did last time is try to entice uh, a, a Democrat who's progressive to run on the Green Party platform, like Joe Stein wanted Bernie Sanders to get on the to the Green Party and run as a third party, but Bernie Sanders refused. He didn't even acknowledge it. 
And uh, you would think that the Green Party would do the same thing with a progressive candidate that won't make it in the Democratic Party. But uh, if no one accepts, uh, if there's no Democratic uh, candidate that accepts a, the position to, to run within the Green Party, I think that also points to uh, candid, uh, cabinet positions um, to be to be had within um, 2020 if Hillary gets elected. All right, let's see. Uh, Chris, uh, Grant Jarvis, yeah, yeah, I guess you like Tulsi. Uh, that's fine. Um, I I wouldn't ever vote for her if she was in the Democratic or the Republican Party. Um. Is that a fight? Oh, God, I hope not. Uh, Eric, I wish I could be in now. I'm working on uploading videos, getting title and descriptions. Yeah, 30 videos in two days. Yeah, that's going to be some time. <clears throat> oh, you're monitoring HA's live stream when he goes live. That's awesome. Uh, that's good. Um, you'll be in as soon as you're done, which will probably be in two days. <laughs> All right, Christian Ebon, if she does win, run and win the Dem nomination and loses the general again do you think she goes back into the woods for good yeah yeah uh, this is all or nothing you know there's she's there's just not enough uh, momentum um i mean they don't have enough momentum as it is but they just really won't have the momentum whoever's in 2020 or 2024 it's not gonna be trump again like a lot of this is anyone but trump you know, just like before, it was like anyone but Hillary. But this time, it's definitely anyone but Trump. And so in 2020, they don't have that. They don't have that uh, as far as like the DNC and public perception. They don't have anyone horrible to run against. I mean, who's going to be hor more horrible than Donald Trump in 2024? Uh, I guess you got the Mike Pence in 2024 you could have. But he's, it's not like Mike Pence says the stuff that Donald Trump says to to um to really antagonize the uh the people <laughs> to elicit those reactions that they get um grant jarvis not perfect but best of a bad lot mag failure dwayne johnson the rock could have made the best democrat to run against trump but it's too late for that now yeah i guess i mean an actor versus another actor uh you know, I don't know. You know, Dwayne Johnson, wasn't he a wrestler and wasn't like uh, Donald Trump kind of uh, in on it a little bit, too? I'm pretty sure they go way back. <laughs> Eric, I don't think Hillary will get in. She'll make out like a bandit and puff it on TDS. Like uh, she's had she's gotten a lot of money. You know, she raised a lot of money. She still has the Clinton Foundation. She has now another corporation. Um, and um, I, she's not going to make as much money as she did. And I think she's going to want more. Uh, she's not going to have as much power as she did. Uh, her, her time is waning because she hasn't been in... A political position for years you know at least before she, they could have said you know she was uh um mayor or not mayor uh senator for new york hey christian how's it going hello hello how you been are you are you laying down on the ground again yeah going on <laughs> well, yeah, my back hurting so i'm just doing this right now Okay. Yeah. What's Long going on, time. Brother? How's it been? I think it's been like months, hasn't it? Yeah, it has been. Yeah. Been How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Good. Are you still going to the Assange rallies? Uh, In New York, New Jersey. Since it's been a while. Yeah. It's the last one was, I think, the last time we talked. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's been a while. Mm -hmm. It's been a while, man. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm still keeping in touch with him you know, as, as best I can. I've been out of a loop too, like you said. It's just like you were saying, it's hard for one man to know so much. <laughs> yeah, 
and uh you know there's there really isn't a lot of this going on i, I would have hoped um i mean uh james if you're watching james manitog hasn't been doing much lately i think he's kind of been busy lately and mm -hmm. um um kelly lane has been doing some stuff but it's been slowing down uh she's pretty busy from what i hear um mm. I haven't seen anyone else who used to do these types of streams and get together doing anything. And uh, I just started back up last week, really, and uh, to see what people think. I mean, it, it is a, a topic some people just like to discuss, and, and you guys like to come in, and um, I, I like to hear it. I like to hear it. It's, it's just uh, it, like... When when I look at conspiracy theories, right, conspiracies and, you know, people will call them conspiracy theories. It's all stuff that happened in the past. You know, it's 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 like something that happened in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever. Like we don't get to have a conspiracy that's ongoing going in the current time frame. Right. Right. Uh, this whole Julian Assange, DNC fraud, Seth Rich and a whole bunch of other people involved. This is real time. <laughs> this is a real time yeah. conspiracy. So we get to witness it. We get, we get to uh, expose it. We get to uh, try to crack it, you know, and try to see, you know, what's how is the 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 establishment narrative, the the official narrative, um, taking things. Who's following that narrative and and supporting it and we, we get to see who's not who's against that who's really trying to expose the corruption uh the right. conspiracy and it's it's a i mean how could you not follow it because it's 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 real time it's not like we could go back and expose like the moon landing or the jfk assassination or whatever i this is now this is now mm -hmm. so i think um it, it's even if it's if you don't consider it your duty, I would say it's just consider it like, man, this is like a, a mystery, like not in the movies, not in the history books, but now it's this is, yeah. I mean, if you like mystery, there you have it, it's something to participate in. <clears throat> yeah, man, it's 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 crazy. It's uh, like you said, it's developing, it's in the now of now, here, the here and now, yeah. So it's it is definitely interesting. I've been watching um or trying to keep close watch on the Epstein case too, which I find very fascinating. Just yeah. the amount of people that he knew that he had close ties with. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. I'm I'm wondering if he's gonna <laughs> if he's gonna uh, you know make it to uh another courtroom, you know between now and then you know what i mean oh um yeah i think so he's got protection in the in the in the prison etc they probably put him in uh, they probably make sure that nothing happens to him i mean uh, people put him in there for a reason right they don't want him to die otherwise there goes the whole thing uh it's they're they're using him for exposure and uh, maybe also as a distraction and um i mean even with this going on with him in prison being um investigated uh people still don't think that the whole uh pedo gate or uh you know just the human sex trafficking for even minors exists they or you know it's that stuff has happened many many times within government within religious institutions and uh, they still refuse to believe that it's being done now with the people that they like, whether it's people in Hollywood, whether it's people in government, whether it's uh, mm -hmm. what, whatever. And um, I know it's starting to get tough for people to just deny that stuff's going on. So uh, that's that's kind of good. Yeah, I guess so in a way, man. I just. Um, yeah, it's it's. It's scary in a way too. Just the amount of victims he supposedly had and what he did to them. It's like, and the fact that he pretty much got away scot free already once before in Florida. 
Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen this time? I mean, the the thing about this is, it's it's just like um. Look, he he's one of those people where if you take down, he'll take down everyone else with him, because he has yeah. the dirt on everybody else that he was with, and whether it's true or not, people know that he had. I mean, you've got pictures with him with pretty much everybody. So uh, it's just going to be hard to not believe him, wh- whoever he 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 says. I mean, he could lie. He could lie that, uh, you know, um, Trump was never involved, that Bill Clinton was never involved, but he'll name all these other people. And it could just be all lies. And But it's already out mm-hmm. there, you know. And if that's so, he's protected. I mean, if he doesn't name out Trump, you know, He's protected. If he doesn't out Clinton, either Hillary or Bill, if they get reelected in 2020, you know, they'll probably pardon him. I mean, they've already, they pardoned him. Aren't they the ones that originally pardoned him? I thought. Uh, No, I believe it was the, um, the attorney general for Florida that was on Trump's cabinet up until recently, Acosta. They set up a, a plea bargain with him. Oh, okay. Uh, I think the charge was soliciting, which basically implied that the minors, the, the girls, were whores. It's still, they're still underage. It yeah, no, matter. I'm just saying, like they, yeah. they pretty much like <clears throat> rub salt into the wound. Like, oh, yeah, you know, um, letting this guy, you know, get off a little bit. Oh, and by the way, we're charging him with solicitation, which implies that your daughter is a whore. Just imagine that. Like, imagine Mm -hmm. being a father of a 14-year-old girl being told that. And after you go to your government in confidence (laughs) and hope that they do the right thing. Yeah. I I don't know what what the fathers are doing these days. They must have gotten a good package or deal or something because I think I'd be out there with my knife cutting some things, parts off of the person who had said that, you know? (laughs) Um, You know, I guess some people are pretty passive. I think uh, American people are pretty passive these days. Not just Americans, just everyone worldwide. Like They could do anything and you're just going to be like, Okay, I guess that happened. I'm pissed, but what am I going to do? <laughs> they don't oh, realize how much... Yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead and finish your thought. Oh. I'm sorry. Bro. Oh, no, no. That's good. I talk too much. I'd rather have other people talk. I'm serious. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I, I'm not sure about them. I'm just looking at the Gilets Jaunes, the yellow vest in France. I mean, it was just, you know... Is that still going? Still going, still yeah. Going? It's like, 37th week something like that i thought i thought the uh, french government was getting a lot more uh, aggressive against the protesters yellow vest yeah they are they have been but they're still going at it they're still going at it man all right no more no more making fun of the french i mean you know how we, we used to make the americans used to make fun of the french so just rolling over every time they got invaded no not anymore i mean heck they got more gumption now than the americans do so they certainly do, man. They certainly do. I mean, people have lost their eyes. People have lost hands. It's crazy. Yeah. And they're still going. Yeah, I think that gives them uh, more resolve. Like, look, I think if if, if something like that happens, um, you know, people most likely are two ways about it. They, they just kind of fold and, and they go away. Or they double down and go, "You did this to us. Oh, now we're really pissed. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna keep going till you guys are done and out, or you guys lose a couple of eyes, etc." And um, I think it's gotten. I think maybe a big problem is is um, is you know, it, too much of our history is focused on peaceful rallies and protests which may have worked once but never again whether it's Mahatma Gandhi or, or Martin Luther King Jr. and um, so people remember that and they, that's just the example that they follow because well of course no one really wants to hurt anybody 
But then you've got the authorities that are hurting the people who are peacefully protesting, and you still don't get any retaliation. And, you know, people are folding. They just don't have that courage anymore. They don't have that uh, conviction and spite against uh, horrible things done to to people. And the thing is, uh, people don't regard it as, as being violence done to American people or whoever it is out in the world. You know, the violence is being done by the authorities, by the establishment, and people are just okay with it because they go, oh, well, we can't go against the authorities. And then when they peaceful protest against it, more violence is done against them, and they still don't retaliate. You know, it's gotten to the point where it's like, what happened to the balls of people, man? You know, um, you've got in somewhere in Central America, or maybe it's even Mexico, I, mm -hmm. I did a video about it. And it's just a small town. And what happened is, like, the mothers, the mothers, like, grandmothers and stuff. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and they went out and said, you know, we're we're tired of this corruption. We're going to stand up to you guys. And if our husbands and our sons don't don't help, you know, we're, too bad. Because <laughs> we're going to mm. we're gonna do it. And so all the husbands and the sons were like, man, we can't let the women uh, get hurt. You know, so they went to protect them. And so they got all the thugs and the corruption out of their town they they reheld their own you know local governments they had their own police force you know from the people and that town is pretty much self sufficient no 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 one wants to risk their lives go taking that town out you know if you're if you're a government or if you're just a um a gang or whatever and and that's that that's what was impressive if we want like the uh sjw stuff now we just need them to lead the charge and the guys will back them up it's not like we're gonna the guys are gonna let the women you know get hurt and 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 do the stuff that men should have been doing a long time ago you know so yeah is yeah. isn't there stuff going on in south america too like pretty big like in brazil uh and venezuela of course yeah it's always been pretty uh, yeah um i mean and i mean just the usual corruption that you uh find in south america and Latin america yeah uh this was a, a few months ago but i was reading that there were some new like corruption charges like being you know investigated in regards to the brazilian president uh, bolsonaro um, like some money laundering stuff, I believe something along the lines like that. I don't quite yeah. remember. Yeah. Um, and then something similar to the guy that was supposed to be uh, the uh, replacement for. Uh, oh, I remember. <laughs> yeah, Guaido, uh, the <clears throat> replacement for um, Maduro. You know, and yeah. now nobody like that um, to the side now. Um, Damn, it's just, it's just a lot of craziness going yeah. on all over the world. And um, you know what? What's what's interesting is after Assange was silenced, like there's hasn't been much uh, exposure of uh, Spain and Catalonia, and um, I don't know what's going on now with that. Uh, well, um, I mean, there's still dozens of people that are political prisoners are still locked up. Um. They don't have they don't have their independence. Um, that's another obvious thing. And I mean, I've been out of the loop on that too. But from what I last remember, I mean, even with the new president of Catalonia, it's just been it's been hard to deal with Madrid. Yeah. Madrid is like hell bent on not letting them go. Yeah, I I always wonder because I would love to. I mean, because I do think what was great about uh, Unit for J uh, and is still great, and you know any anything that stems from that uh, like consortium news. When I'm looking at the analytics, there's just a lot of people around the world in different countries that are just yeah. uh, joining in, right? And um, I I'd love to talk with a lot of those people and just wonder. If they ever think like, when are the Americans going to start standing up to their government? You know, like, 
we're like people in Venezuela, we don't even have guns and we're, we're sending it to our government. And you've got people in, you know, Catalonia, Brazil, and um, many other places that are uh, France that are just standing up to the government. They have like no guns. And it's like, dude, we're, we're all we got are rocks and sticks <laughs> against tanks. And you Americans have the most guns of any country with your own citizens. And you guys yes. ain't doing shit. You know, I, I wonder if anyone thinks of that, you know, from all these other countries out there. Yeah, man, they probably do. I mean, it's it's hard to encapsulate, you know, the mind of a general populace because, you know, we're all individuals. You know, we all have our different upbringings or different yeah. mindsets come from different parts of the country. Um, yeah, man, it's just I think part part of the reason why. I guess Americans are more complacent or more passive in terms of, you know, standing up and saying no to the government and holding the government to account um, in face of just blatant, obvious waste, fraud, and abuse is because we've been bred to be that way by the various forms of media, you know that we've grown up with and that our parents grew up with and their parents before that. Um, and I think protest protestantism, ah, I'm saying that wrong. You know, the religious, uh, conservative, very Christian based in America has been pretty much the turn the other cheek type of thing, you know? And, um, same thing with the Catholicism in, in quite a way. So Americans very, very Christian, in that sense and that's part of the society of uh, upbringing is just being pretty pretty dang you know resilient against anything done to you like if, mm. if bullies are beating you up let them beat you up <laughs> god will handle it later <laughs> type of thing you know <laughs> right <clears throat> yeah yeah now when i was growing up my my parents just well my mother especially to say like if somebody pushes you you punch them <laughs> yeah yeah like if you if they push you, not if they punch you. If they push you, you punch them. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's funny you mentioned that, man, because that's another thing I want to you know bring up is that I think another thing to blame is that we are also bred to be so focused on ourselves, our fellow citizens, and be at odds with one another. I mean, just look at it. It's always you always tend to see it. It's always. A or B, that seems to frame it as, right? Whether it's white, black, gay, straight, Republican, Democrat, mm -hmm. left, righty, north, south, east coast, west coast. I mean, it's just it it's very on, dualistic. On. Yeah, yeah, dualistic, exactly. Not just dual, like D U A L, but dual <laughs> as well, you know? <laughs> yeah, dual is <also> true, right? <laughs> Um, that's a good pun though yeah. that's a good pun <laughs> hey i'm a dad so i get to have all these puns um dad jokes oh man um i don't know are you uh, would you be excited for all this change i mean would you like if you thought about like a revolution occurring would you be mm -hmm. um would you would would you rather have he, here's the thing when people say Oh, you what you want a revolution, uh, and you know have a war, and I think look, a revolution is inevitable. It always happens when there's corruption in authority, in and yeah. in government, and in every case of history, even if we do, if you don't believe in history, whether you or not you believe in the written history, even then they've always touted as revolutions occurring in very. Mm -hmm dictatorship or authoritarian or just you know very, these all these forms of government where corruption reigns mm -hmm. and when people say what uh, look i would rather have here, here's the easy answer i would rather have the revolution now where i can fight it than rather have my kids fight the revolution for me when i'm older right i would rather have that happen than my kids have to do it so yeah, bring it on. Let's have it now rather than later because I don't want my kids to have to fight the fight that we should have had when when, when my father was, was around. That revolution should have happened decades ago. Uh, it never happened, 
And now it's up to us. And if we don't do it, yeah, our kids are going to have that revolution. And it's not going to be pretty. Uh, so that's the way I think about it. And um, mm-hmm. and I think uh, all these countries that are rising up, I think it's a good thing. I'm glad that they're, they've got that fire in them to just stand up to this uh, worldwide. It's a worldwide thing. I mean, we just... Yeah. <laughs> It's the it's the new world order, <laughs> you know. It's they're it's they're all intertwined together. There's pockets of go- countries that are trying to not be a part of that, and we're seeing the the takedown of those countries, one by one. Yeah, it's all over the place in Europe, in Asia, North America, South America, everywhere. Yeah. And like as far as what I would think about it, I mean. I guess I'm share the same sentiment as you. Like I would rather it happen now, so like my children wouldn't have to go through with it, yeah. and also that will, so that the uh, the government will be less um, capable of mounting a pretty significant defense to it. Because uh, I think that the more time goes on with the way things are, I think the stronger you know the elites get. You know, whether you want to call them newer or yeah. older, or you want to call it neoliberalism, you it's, want to call it it's always been you know? a war of attrition, and they've been winning. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, like I when I see people out on the street, like just homeless, I I honestly don't know how they survive. I mean, they're just out there all the time, and uh, but you know they survive, and. Um, it's 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 getting pretty bad too i mean we're seeing a lot of homeless uh around the world i mean it was it was bad in 2008 now it's getting worse because whatever savings they had at least they could let go of their mortgage and move out and still have some some of their nest egg but now you know Mm -hmm. how long can your nest egg last um so it's uh i think it's getting to it's getting very constrictive uh i mean the top Top one percent keep getting more of the wealth than the bottom fifty uh, percent, you know. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's it's nuts, man. I, um, revolutions always turn violent, and that's the part that you know worries me the most. You know, like how bad is it going to get? Yeah, I mean, I would love. I would love the revolution here to be like the one time, the one outlier where a peaceful revolution actually worked, like a peaceful protest actually. But I think for that to happen, you'd have to get millions and millions, like tens of millions, if not like a hundred million, which would be like a third of the population in the US for that to really work. But even like in, you see like in France, like they're still going, man, and they have tens of thousands of people, if not more, yeah. doing that every weekend, every weekend. They've been doing that every weekend for 35 plus weeks. And still they're going at it. Yeah. They still do that they, the changes that they want haven't been made yet. The concessions they've wanted haven't been done yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, it's like, yeah, it's go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. no. I, I just, Agreeing. I'm just saying, yeah, <laughs> it's it's good. I mean, what's the point of um? I think that was also the downfall of um, the unions in the United States. You know, a lot of the unions were just taking whatever little they can get because pretty much everyone they they've just they've just been constricted. A war of attrition, you know, against the yeah. unions. It's like the unions really can't last. That's why we don't have unions anymore. It's like they're strapped for money. Just everything's pricey, especially if uh, you're going on strike in a in a big, populated city where the uh, the um, the what's the what's what is it when it's like the local economy economy the price you know the the rates of where you live. For example, Boston is way way pricier than it is in Columbus, Nebraska. And, you know, <laughs> if you yeah, live in New York, San Francisco, you know, the cost of living. Yeah, the cost of living. Cost of living, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, in the cities, you're going to have unions because there's just more people in, in there. But mm. when you live in the city, you also have higher cost of living. So it's going to be harder to support your family with just whatever you have with your savings or whatever the union could provide, etc. cetera. So because um, right. I've, I've been there, I, I, my my father used to work at Boeing and they used to have a lot of strikes. And oh, uh, wow. yeah, it, it was pretty tough. And um, what's funny is when I used to work at uh, Alaska Airlines, there used to also be um, strikes with the union because they they were going to just uh, lay off everybody and, and hire a um, bunch of uh, contractors, etc. cetera. Uh, I was only at the tail end of that, so I didn't have to uh, go through that. I did have a friend had to go through that um mm -hmm. but yeah let's see let's i'm gonna look at chat real quick yeah no problem uh zog failure mag zog failure americans will stand up when they come for our guns that's what we own assault rifles uh the end of the usa will come soon after all of california declares secession i i i don't think california will ever uh secede they, they probably wouldn't let them i think Cal there'd be it have to be that might be part of it that might be part of uh the revolution is um <laughs> multiple states trying to secede i know florida wants to secede california uh it seems like a lot of the um uh the coastline and um the south yeah. really want to secede and I i'm for it really <laughs> i think i think it's great um uh let's see cuz i mean there, there used to be a reason for for United States to be united for all the individual states, just because you know we we don't want to be taken over by any invading force, but we are the invading force, so we don't have to worry about anyone taking us over. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Uh, Lori, see, it's great. Agree. True. Uh, Mega Zog. If we start for the homeless, not kids in cages. Claude Alley reconciliation is one wicked word. Uh, Grant Jarvis unions have been beheaded. Anyone with brains and morals are removed. Yeah. So, I mean, they've had a lot of practice. <laughs> you know, the governments and corporations is government is pretty much a bunch of corporations these days. And they, they, they know how to fight against unions. You know, they know how to just, uh, they'll just, they'll just go to the meeting table and say, okay, here's our deal you guys go back to work and you guys will get paid for all the days you guys been on strike and if you guys go on strike again within five years well we're gonna just fire you guys <laughs> and then the union workers are like okay <laughs> you know it, it, it's it's always kind of been like that and uh, uh and i think that's kind of what the government is doing you know, there's just like, hey, you guys want to protest? Well, go ahead and protest. We'll make it worse on your lives if you guys protest. We'll take you to jail. We'll notify your employer. Maybe you'll get fired. We'll, uh, you know, we'll make it a felony. <laughs> you know, uh, all this other stuff. Uh, they'll fine you. It's like, hey, we're going to fine you for, for this. It's like, I didn't even do that. Well, we're fining you and you're going to have to contest in court. It's like, court's costly. <laughs> And, uh, you know, people fold. It's like, at that point, what you should be doing is doubling down, saying, I'm not paying that fine. I'm going out there. And this time, you guys aren't going to arrest me. I'm going to fight back, et cetera. It's like, you got you guys pretty much infringed on my on my rights. And uh, that's what should have happened. Instead, they just folded. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're out protesting, I would say it's an all or nothing thing. You know, you don't protest uh, like part time. <laughs> uh, <you know? laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. If you if you're a part time protester, you're you're not gonna get what you want uh, with it. Whether especially if you're just an individual, but in a group, definitely. I mean, you have to have the mentality of of going all in on it. Get what you want. Anything else is not not an option. You know, because the opposition to establishment that's their same mentality you can't fight the same you can't fight that mentality with just going half-assed at it you know you have to mm -hmm. meet them at the same same pace you know and um 
I don't know. I don't know what it is that dr- fires up the American people, but something has to really ignite their butts for them to really say, you know, <laughs> we dealt with this back in the 1700s and 1800s. We should dealt with it in the 1900s, but hell, we're going to deal with it now. And um, I think that'll get people going. Because, uh, you know, I one thing I, I have a feeling, I doubt... The kids in the military and most of them are kids that are going to be fighting are going to want to hurt mm-hmm. their fellow Americans. Like, I I don't think that uh, National Guard or the Army are going to want to fire upon civilians. And civilians, I don't think they want to fire on anybody either, you know. So it's just one option. Take down the government that's been corrupt and, and taking away uh, Americans' freedoms. And let's just... Uh, Start back over, get everyone out. Like, let's actually drain the swamp, like everyone wanted Trump to do. Yes, yes. <laughs> all right. It's like drain the swamp. Yes. Yeah. All right. We'll put more. We'll put a bigger swamp in. And people are like, yeah, he drained the swamp. All right. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, Thomas Jefferson saw revolution as a necessary sort of filter. He want. He said that. We should have a revolution every two decades, every 20 years. So that way, you know, you filter out the baggage, right? The, mm-hmm. You clean out the the clogged pipe, yeah. if you will. I mean, right? you, replace it with a new one. Yeah. I mean, it makes more sense. It, it's like imagine making a prototype product and the first version of the product was the best product and you never had to go revisit and, and make an updated version of it. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, everything that w- that started back in, in whatever, 1776, hey, it's perfect. <laughs> you know, uh, we, you know, it mm-hmm. didn't start over from scratch to make a better version of it. We just kept on adding parts, removing parts, and uh, we see that that didn't work. What we should have had was a 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, and saying, okay. Uh, mm-hmm. We we should we shouldn't have this. This is just definitely not good. Uh, but we this stuff was good. Let's keep that. Get away with that. Let's just start over. Cause I mean, all that stuff that's bad now was made like 50, 60, maybe even a hundred years ago. It's like I think mm-hmm. times change. Uh, that stuff doesn't really affect us now, but we're still gonna follow it. I mean, it's just like all those states' laws were. Uh, they still have those weird laws, um, like, for example, marriage laws where you can still marry when you're 14 or something, as long as you got <laughs> it's like court approved or something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that doesn't seem to make sense. Um, and yeah, some outdated laws that never just been taken away. They just mm-hmm. hung around. Uh, Claude Alley. Um, how would they deal with it now for for true yeah we're pioneer witnesses uh maga zog failure i don't think first generation immigrants should be allowed to protest um yeah i think anybody should be allowed to protest but um i i think you have a point there um i think uh what the first generation immigrants should have done was protest uh, where they left <laughs> I'd say, look, if the immig- first generation immigrants protested and, ha- you know, participated in protests or revolutions where they were living before and came to the United States, I think we want them on our team when uh, they start protesting um, because, you know, we don't have that type of people with that mentality these days. But hopefully they're protesting about the right thing, you know, not protesting to the establishment points but the protest against just the uh, everyone's individual freedom points <laughs> you're saying like what would make people get up out uh, off their couch to protest i i just thought of like like if uh oreos like <laughs> if they resize the size of their oreo like they made it smaller <laughs> but they charge more for it <clears throat> A bunch of fines. Yeah. <laughs> the Oreo factory. Oh man, that's just horrible. But that is funny. Yeah. It's like, 
I don't know about this Constitution stuff, but you guys better make those Oreos bigger again. <laughs> oh, you remember, remember the Twinkie? Remember that they were going to get rid of the Twinkie a few years ago? Yeah. The uproar that happened? Yeah. It's like, no, oh, how could you do that? Fucking Amer- American is apple pie. What are you doing? Yeah. Didn't they? Didn't they stuck around? Um, like the, I think Hostess got rid of it or something, or Hostess went bankrupt, or I don't remember. And then, something like that. I yeah. think someone else like bought the ingredients and they made it. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I I like Twinkies way back, but they have like like beef fat and all this other stuff. So I I haven't eaten it since I was. 13 or something like that uh i don't know (laughs) but that's the thing is when i was a kid i remember tasting stuff and i was like oh man this is so good and then i remember uh trying it when i was older like in my 20s maybe even 30s and it's like yeah it used to be good what happened did they change the ingredients i think they just stayed the same and you know just Mm -hmm. your taste just developed differently yeah, I mean, like, back when I was a kid, like, I I mean, I, I grew up around the city, so whenever I would venture there, I would have, you know, the occasional hot dog. And then as I got older, as I grew into adulthood, I, I uh, found out what hot dogs are made of. <laughs> and I was like, uh, maybe not the best thing to eat. <laughs> yeah. And this was, you know, back, you know, before I was a vegan or anything, I was still eating meat and whatnot. Yeah. I was like, uh, you're not the best thing in the world to eat. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. I mean, um, it it is weird. Like when I, when I became vegetarian, um, when I started vegetarian now, no, I was always a vegetarian since I was like 11. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, Oh shit. Once my daughter was being born, I wanted her to make the choice whether she wanted to eat meat mm-hmm. or not. But mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure that if we ate meat, it would be meat that we had to kill ourselves, hunt and or fish and kill mm-hmm. ourselves. Uh, that way she understood where the meat came from. If she liked it, you know, she's not seeing just cut up meat at the store and going, hey, mm-hmm. I like that stuff. And then later she finds out that, you know, it's all it's either it's like pigs that were that could couldn't even turn around in their cages and you know getting yeah. killed and all this other stuff and so uh that's when i started fishing and getting into hunting and so she tried uh fish she likes fish it's like the only food she really eat and uh mm. and she she understands that we had to kill it and but she's she knows she watches so much of like nature channels she's like a big nature buff like me and and she mm-hmm. knows like so many animals eat fish and fish eat fish and you know it's it's you know but we don't want to waste any of the fish and all this other stuff like we'll have an aquarium take care of a fish and um and uh we tried deer venison because uh as mm-hmm. i was actually out going to hunt for wild turkey right. um there's two deer that got ran over that morning uh, oh, in a very wow. private road and uh-huh. uh, everything was fresh. So I was like, I guess I won't go hunting for wild turkey. So I brought it back and we had uh, vet- venison and um, she didn't really like it. I mean, um, I mean, that was the backstrap, which is the best part of venison. And she didn't like that. So um, mm-hmm. I'm pretty much sure she won't like cows because, I mean, venison is similar to cows, just you know, not not fatty at all. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't want to eat squirrels or rabbits because they're cute. Um, <laughs> oh. uh, I think she will eat oh. chicken or turkey because um, she likes the uh, tofurkey. And I let her try real turkey once at my brother's in Thanksgiving. Uh, as you know, she knew where it came from, real turkey, that they, they mm. live differently when they're grown and all this other stuff. Yeah. She liked the taste, so she wants me to go turkey hunting. So the only thing I really, I'll really hunt is for poultry, you know, turkey and birds. Mm-hmm. Um, although the thing is, we I could hunt for um, um, these Eurasian doves. I think they're year round, but there's three of them that just love our driveway because we 
we don't put any weed killer on our grasses so and our grass grow crazy and so they just yeah, love you put roundup <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so they just hang around our 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 yard and our driveway just eating all the seeds you know and um it's like I, I don't really want to kill them. It seems like they're just part of like the like the American robins that nest every year. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, eh, it just we get to know them too well. <laughs> we don't want to kill them. So I have a feeling that when we raise like chickens, and it's mostly gonna be for eggs, but we're not gonna want to eat the the chickens. So um, you know, it's just wild. I think that's what also makes it easier when you're hunting is like they live out in the wild. You don't get to know them personally. You know they don't end up being like pets so it's just uh, it's just a little bit easier about eating them killing them and eating them in my opinion like i always thought about raising rabbits for food because they grow quickly and stuff and mm -hmm. um they're probably healthier than chickens but i don't know about the thought of killing like i had to here's the problem uh, like with um maybe if if once once agriculture was was made where we had to plant things and, and take care of it with gardens and stuff and not just eat the stuff that's out in the wild uh we had to take care of rodents right like voles we have a problem with voles field mice whatever mm -hmm. um so i had, had to set traps because our garden they just burrow under the, the the ground and eat the beets and the carrots and uh, so they ate pretty much everything except for a carrot and a beet from my from our garden, and uh, so I put traps out there. I caught one um, that was going for sunflower seeds, and uh, I think it's illegal to release. I, I might I might rethink that. I might just probably catch them because I got the mm -hmm. jaw traps, which will pretty much kill them if they're in it, and I also got yeah. the humane ones where it's just they go in and they're trapped. So I caught it in there, and I I would have rather released it out in some public woods, like wildlife management area. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that might my, my wife said that's probably illegal or something like that, and I'd be like, whatever. Uh, I don't know. It it probably varies from state to state. Yeah, it, it's I state to imagine. state. But I don't know. I just don't like killing things. If like, it's one thing to kill things for food, but just to kill things because they're eating part of your garden and stuff i was like yeah. I, I, you know i'd rather just throw them out in the woods like 20 30 miles away where they could just find stuff to eat and live yeah. their life out that way uh i don't know it, uh, it's I guess, just weird. i got a question for you then all right would you if you saw it say in your garage or in your kitchen would you kill a cockroach yeah. I, I, yeah. View, I view insects differently. Um, just more Why? of a... Hmm? Why? Why are insects different? Just disease. And, um, uh, if they get in my way, like, it, like that's mm -hmm. like cockroaches are one thing. Uh, fruit flies are another. Uh, they just pose problems. Like um, ants sometimes, although I just try to deter the ants uh, with oils. Um, but like, like I'm in the basement, there's tons of flies, like gnats, I'll kill house flies. I'll kill mosquitoes. I'll definitely kill, um, moths. I let them fly around, uh, if they get in here, I've got wasps that are on the doorway that goes outside to the backyard. There's just an actual a small nest up in the top corner. Um, I, they haven't bothered us or stung us. So I just kind of let them stay, but I think my wife and my daughter want me to move it. So one day I'm going to have to get in my beekeeper's gear and move that nest out to like under the corner of our house or something like that. Um, I've got plenty of, of spiders around me and beetles, like the beetles I leave, yeah. like I like they'll probably get eaten by the spiders. Um, there was a, a snake that was in here before I freed it outside. Oh, it was just a small, tiny snake. It got stuck in like some Velcro tape. And so I, oh, I poor thing. took it out of the Velcro tape and put it outside. They're good. Cause they'll, they'll at least eat like the rodents. Um, yeah. 
grasshoppers and crickets right here i leave them alone spiders the only time i kill them is when they just get like they start hanging and getting in my face or crawling all over me then i'm like all right you invaded my space but uh majority of the time or if i'm cleaning you up it's like i'm sorry but i need to get there so i and there's just yeah. like i'm counting down near my feet seven or eight spiders and a whole bunch of dead insects like I, i'm pretty much okay with leaving them alone as long as they leave me alone but like certain type of insects and um like cockroaches, you don't want infestations of cockroaches and their, and their poop. You know, it's not good for the kids or your lungs or whatever. So certain things, like it's it's just trade off. It's like hey, uh, but good thing I don't have to deal with cockroaches. I had to deal with them in in Texas, but I don't. They don't have. I don't. I haven't seen cockroaches in a long time. So. Yeah. And in Texas, aren't they really big? Yeah, they're big. They're huge. <laughs> I mean, like th they'd be like the size of this, if not bigger. Some of and some of them have wings. They'll fly around in your face, and they're hard to kill. Yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> well, if if you want to kill them, just like a a random uh, bit of trivia for you guys: if you want to kill a cockroach. Aim for their ass, because that's where their brain is at. Their brain is in their ass? Yes, they evolve, yes. So if you squish its head, a cockroach can survive without a head for a whole month. That's really weird. Yeah. Their brain is all the way towards their rectum. <clears throat> in I, their ass. End yeah. of fed, end of feds here. Yeah, oh wow, I'm going to have to look that up. But man, ah, uh, uh, yeah. so weird cockroaches. <laughs> no, um, it's, I mentioned that because um, the other day uh, I was coming home, right? And I was in the garage with, with my mother and uh, she had some popcorn in her hand, right? And I was just, but the garage door was open and we were just looking around and I noticed there was a cockroach like right in the driveway. It's like in our driveway, we have, you know, the, the driveway and then you have the garage that goes in i was like oh look mom look there's a there's a cockroach over there it's like why why my mother starts getting nervous and everything she's holding the popcorn right and just looking at the thing i'm like oh okay i'm just you know not, not taking it too seriously it's just a, an animal it's like 15 feet away from us right yeah and so as i'm trying to go to close the garage door i hear like a sound like like an insect flapping its wings, right? And the next thing I know, I, I start turning back around and I see the cockroach whiz past me. It's flying through the air and it goes towards my mother who's <laughs> holding the popcorn. And my mother just screams like, ah! <laughs> some of the popcorn. She goes running towards the back. And the cockroach is somewhere in, in the garage. And we spent like, an hour trying to find the thing and I'm like conflicted. I'm like, oh man, I don't really want to kill it. You know, I don't like if I have a chance to like grab it and take it outside, I will. And I was like, What are you crazy? <laughs> like the same <laughs> diseases. They're disgusting. I'm like, Mom, but they don't bite you. Like so what? It, it's it's uh, an insect. Yeah, you might think differently when they get in your food and they leave feces all over your food. Yeah. Right, I understand, yeah. But, I mean, it was just the thing that just flew in, probably because of the light, because we had a, we have a, there's a light in the garage that's pretty bright. So I'm guessing that was it, because the, the garage was pretty, uh, the driveway was pretty dim lit. And so maybe it saw the light, and I was like, oh, look, there's a light over here. And just, you know, you know how insects fly with yeah. light. It just flew right towards it, and my mother just happened to be in its way. And so... <laughs> This terrorized my mother, but um, <laughs> you should have had that on video, man. No, I didn't. I unfortunately did not. But it was it was pretty funny. It was funny to watch. I was at my I was uh, probably right in the center of the garage, right, and my mother was off to the side towards the door that leads upstairs, to like where I'm at right now. Um, 
So between us was like about maybe five feet, maybe six feet. And I just just saw the freaking cockroach whiz by me and go right towards my mother. It was probably flying like maybe like 10 miles an hour. It was pretty fast, man. I was like, whoa. Yeah. And that was the first time I ever seen a, a cockroach with wings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've held them in my hand. Like I went to, um, where was I? I think I was in Florida. I went to like this zoo or maybe an aquarium, something like that. No, Mm -hmm. it had to be a zoo. And they had like these cockroaches and they let you hold them. Like they pet cockroaches. And I was like, okay, I was was, like freaking seven years old. I didn't know. And I had like um, three or four cockroaches I was holding in my hand. They were just crawling around, you know, it's making weird noise. Like, (laughs) (laughs) And I remember, like, my, my mother was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, freaked out by my mom. Like, the damn thing doesn't buy you. Why are you so freaked out by it? Like, yeah. it, doesn't, it hasn't shit in your food. It's not. It's only one. Yeah. It's not like there's a whole, like. I mean, touching them, too, because they clean themselves after they poop. You, you just want to make yeah. sure you wash whatever it is they come in contact with. But. I think it's just yeah. uh, just just a lot of the stories of people getting sick, but I think they just get they don't like creepy crawly things that just crawl around all, all the time. Um, I mean, they're just mostly in hot, humid places, and um, yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. Hot, humid places just have a lot of stuff that uh, <laughs> people don't like. Mosquitoes <laughs> love hot, humid cockroaches. Um, snakes yeah but snakes usually don't really bother you too much i mean you'd have to just un- mis- mistakenly like bump into it and hopefully yeah. it's not um poisonous but uh though it seems like i think a lot of the poisonous snakes are usually in really hot and arid like dry heat type of places not necessarily yeah humid. deserts yeah, yeah. yeah. rocky mm-hmm. terrains and um uh yeah yeah, you have like the cotton mouth that's like in Florida. Yeah. Florida, uh, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana. <laughs> um, and you have the rattlesnake, obviously, like in Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, like in the Southwest. Uh, I don't think I have my too well studied on snakes, but I think there's. Another one thing, like the corn snake, is, I'm not sure if that's native to hmm. North America or South America, but that's another poisonous one. Well, there's a corn snake and there's a milk snake, and they're very similar because they're both red, yellow, and black, and they're both hmm. striped that way, but one has a different order. Yeah. The colors, and that's how you could tell which one is the dangerous one and which one is not. <laughs> Yeah, man. I, I remember. Uh, yeah, reading. I know. There's different snakes like that. I used to do the same thing. You know, I think that was poisonous. Oh, wait. I think it's the other one. <laughs> Whatever it is, just stay away from it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty much is a good rule of thumb. Uh, Claude Alley would rather fight a bear before a spider. I don't know about that. Oh, no. Dude, no. And spiders are easy to take care of. Yeah. Um, What I usually have are like the little fish nets. To capture mm. either flies or insects, and that works really well. I don't have to get like a cup and like slide it. That's one way, you know. But uh, the net is just like put both nets together and just carry it outside and then let it go. Um, they usually find a place, or they'll find their way back in here. I like I don't know how all these insects get in here. Like crickets get in here, snakes get in here, tons mm. of spiders, beetles. It's like. Do you have pipes around your basement there? Oh, yeah. That might be it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. They probably get in from somewhere, get in the air vents, and then get out. Could it? Could yeah, not. or even through the water. I mean, especially, you know, cockroaches and... Uh, I don't worry about it. Some snakes can swim. Yeah. Um. Well, these snakes here, I, I, I've looked at them. I mean, 
I I found one uh, like the skin was shed. It was like this this long. It was pretty thick. Uh, but yeah. they, they're not poisonous. And uh, I walked near one and it just like slithered away really fast. So I'm not too worried about the snakes here. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we went off topic pretty fast. All right. <laughs> Politics. <laughs> A bunch of snakes and spiders yeah. and cockroaches are yeah. in our government. <laughs> yes, there you go. We didn't bring it back around, Ebon. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, I, I I would I don't know. It, it's uh so what are your thoughts? Have you been following the uh, the politics in 2019, the, the democratic debates and whatnot? Uh very loosely, man, cuz like you I uh, I'm not going to vote for Democrat or Republican ever again. Doesn't care how, I don't care how good they may look. It may appear on the surface and just, I can't go through that bullshit again. Yeah. I mean, it's like, and I don't even subscribe to the whole, you know, political spectrum, like left, right, you know, are you a capitalist, socialist, libertarian, whatever. I just want what's best for my people. That's it. You know. Wait, who are your people? <laughs> I mean, everybody, man, Americans, human beings, you know. Yeah. That's what about the reptilians? That's oh, the reptilians, yeah. <laughs> oh, which one? The ones that are underground or the ones that are coming to invest in, in TYT? Oh. Uh... <laughs> they want to buy stock in TYT. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, hey, I, I see a lot of, uh, it's kind of sad, a lot of, progressive commentators starting to turn into tyt light and uh tyt ended up becoming like cnn light it, it's it's like this little progression of like let's head back to the establishment it's like let's forget about what happened this time it'll be different and the next yeah. time it'll be different <laughs> and yeah. it stays the same yeah it's <clears throat> cognitive dissonance yeah no it's confirmation bias you know it's it's a lot of things man and it's just i mean you know my story i mean i, mean, I, I took the chance once in 2016 i'm like you know what let me try it and <laughs> it blew up in my face it blew up in everybody's faces that did that i mean because yeah. there were a lot of especially youngsters like me who voted for the first time back in 2016 and then we got royally screwed along with everybody else yeah so it's like why would you subject yourself to that same thing again when it hasn't gotten better right it hasn't stayed the same it's gotten worse like <laughs> yeah it's said. gotten worse it's gotten worse so why would you even consider that it's like no no yeah. like the the metaphor i like to use is like the republican Party and the Democratic Party. Hey, Eric. Oh, Eric's in here. Yo, hey. what's going on, brother? Doing pretty good. Have it yourself. Good, good man, good man. Um, I was saying, like, the metaphor that I like to use is like the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are the two bumpers on the pinball machine. <laughs> the, pinball. the American people are the pinball. They're just hitting us back and forth, back and forth. You know, abusing us. Yeah. And the, and we're all getting screwed up in the end, you know. It's and we're here, like again, we're fighting amongst ourselves yeah. when we really should be fighting against the government, the people in government, the corrupt, you know, the people that commit waste, fraud, and abuse day in and day out. Yeah. yeah. How are you doing, Eric? How are you doing, doing Eric? Doing pretty good. Uh, na naming the uh, the videos that I'm going to upload, uh, like the titles, and mm. getting that done. <laughs> awesome, man. So, do you think you'd vote for a Democrat or Republican? Oh fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> what about Hillary Clinton if she ran again? Oh god, no one should vote for that fucking cunt with the cankles. Uh, okay, what? If 
what if it wasn't Hillary Clinton, but what if it was her green bottle that she spat out one time? Uh, come on. <laughs> bring it back. I just gotta keep bringing it back. Uh, I should never have watched that video. <laughs> yeah. I was like, there, there, there's something wrong with her. It's like whoever's like, you know, propping up Hillary Clinton for fuck's sake. How uh, she, she, she's at her own fucking risk. I mean, like, here's yeah. one thing: I mean, she could pretend all she wants. She could pretend to like, you know, having go quote unquote good health. Mm -hmm. Like people are really, really gonna look into that shit too. Just like in 2016. It'll happen again in 2020. And hell, well, what if something else medical happens that it cannot be truly avoided and it's out there in the fucking public? You know, people are going to be start, you know, asking questions. Look at the time that when she collapsed at uh, that 9-11 uh, memorial back in 2016. It's almost yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think that's going to be much of an issue if she when she runs again in 2020 because it's like, hey, you know, people were saying that she was in bad health in 2016. She's better than ever in 2020, so she's it's not going to be an issue for her. I still question her health to this yeah. day. I, I think it, back then it was also more of a question of her VP choice because if she did keel over, then we'd have what's his name? Was it Bob Kane or something like that? Tim Kane. Tim Kane. Tim Kane. Yeah, yeah. It's like no one wanted Tim Kane, not even the Democrats. Uh, it's <laughs> like if they would have picked someone, if she would have picked someone like Elizabeth Warren, I think they would be okay with her health being bad. You know, oh, Pocahontas, you mean Disney's Pocahontas? Yeah. People, people liked her back in 2016. You know, then she's a fucking letdown and a sellout and an yeah. opportunist yeah. and a champagne socialist. But we knew that once 2016 happened like before that we were kind of like uh, we kind of like elizabeth it was brought to heel by hillary yeah 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 so like a anyone in the dnc they're already brought down to that con's cankles <laughs> well except for except for creepy joe biden he he voluntarily brought himself to heel especially when he massaged them cankles <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I'm going to have nightmares about that. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, you know, he'll get his mitts on it. He'll get his mitts hands on anything, especially mm. them cankles. Oh, my God. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come Enjoy on, the Eric. Visual. Enjoy the visual. Hey. Right. Oh, on gosh. recently, like on the on the Hillary Clinton news, like her best friend died uh, recently. She had her third grandchild. Um, she had her brother pass away. I think mm -hmm. those are just kind of a lot of indicate indicators to also help when she runs. Is like, you know, my best friend, and my brother passed away. You know when. She'll probably like, say something uh, uh, like nope. uh, death guilt votes. Oh, like, oh, feel bad for me. I'm like, you know, yeah. it's like it's like guilt tripping for votes. It's like I was like, oh, wait, she's old. It so, works. You know. she, all she has to say is like before before they left, they just said, I don't you know, for that bullshit. Run again. That's that's what they said. <laughs> you know, I, I can't run let again, them down. But she's going to run into the fucking <laughs> she's going to run the DNC and the Democratic Party into the fucking ground. And when and when Trump leaves office, same thing is going to happen to Republican Party. Well, the thing is, Trump wants her to run. And it's like. I don't see why uh, people keep thinking she's not like Trump really wants her to w win. It just gets everyone amped up. Uh, it's way to amp up the, his base. And it, it really uh, gets just uh, a lot of people paying attention to politics because, I mean, it, it's just like in 2016, you know, when we had that, the whole bunch of Republicans running for the candidacy is like, we don't know who these people are. They're just all kind of boring. You know, at least Trump is a little bit exciting. <laughs> uh, you know, and it's it's kind of like the same thing now. It's like a whole bunch of these Democrats are just kind of boring, rep, rep, repetitious, and you know the same same thing we've been seeing all these years. No one really different. And Senator uh, Disney's Pocahontas did a rain dance, but it ended up triggering a um, 
a sprinkler, so it's like she did a rain dance, but nothing fucking happened. And the true sprinkler. That's a good one. Oh, I, I still think the best duo to win 2020 would be if you have the former uh, Attorney General Eric Holder run under the great Anthony Wieners of New York uh, as the Wiener Holder team. I'm telling you, buddy, <laughs> that's the team to win it all. The that is the team. They all think alike. Yes, I like to mock Hillary Clinton for her comments. <laughs> That'd be like, great. I would. You would. That would be fun to work on their campaign. <laughs> Wiener Holder. <laughs> <clears throat> Holding down Imagine that wiener. Wiener, hey. holder, wiener, holder. <laughs> uh, that would be for the Democrats, too, who are, who, who are very PC. So I don't think <laughs> they'd like that either. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Um, or if, like, Al Franken ran and you had Jill Stein as his VP, like, it would be the Frankenstein campaign. Oh, let me take out the Zoom. I think that is Shirley. And oh, okay. Oh. Hey, Shirley, is that you? Hey, Cheryl. Yes, it is. Hey, uh, Eric. Hey, hey, Christian. How's, How's it going, going? Shirley? It's been a long time. I know. <laughs> um, Why are y'all talking about that scumbag? Who? Which one? There's so many. Queen. Hillary. Oh, Hillary? Don't, yes. don't you love her, though? I mean, she's going to run oh, again. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Chelsea give her to have a third grandchild. She already had Go one. Go home and be a grandma. She had, a, she had the kid a couple of days ago. Oh, she did? What she had? I don't, I don't know. I didn't really care. <laughs> I, just, I hope she's not doing no spirit cooking with those damn kids because uh, they into that oh, shit. God. Yeah. Uh, God, I hate to imagine that. Uh, but uh, her best friend died uh, a couple of days ago too. Uh, like her brother, what I think her younger brother died a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Is that the one she left in Haiti and he still took their money and took over their stuff? I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> it probably was him. Yeah. I mean, uh, it probably runs in the family pretty, pretty yeah. deep. <clears throat> wasn't it? Um, wasn't it George W. Bush who said something like, uh, "God talked to me, talked to me, told me to, to do it, to go to war, something like that," right? Did he say like something like that? I don't know. They not really Christians. Christian. They just playing a Christian. They Zionists. That's yeah. all they are, Zionists. They're yeah, not Christian. Yeah. They can quote that Bible. I know people that ordain ministers, and they can quote that Bible with their eyes closed. And mm -hmm. they got some secrets in their heads. They don't deserve to be ministering. Yeah. Well, heck, Donald Trump doesn't even remember what like his favorite uh, line in the Bible. <laughs> Remember when they asked him, what's your favorite uh, verse? Because <laughs> oh, he's God. not a Christian either. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> his yeah. own pastor called him out for not ever coming to church. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was cracking he? up. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, and, yeah, that's what gets me about uh, conservatives or libertarians. Yeah, who they have very... the Christian values and you anti-abortion, but you're willing to just allow wars to kill women and children yeah and uh i think trump i mean largely trump has was always a democrat for a long long time oh yeah, yeah. he was and uh yeah, he contributed money he gave money yeah democrats uh, he ran as a democrat that... too early on uh not in 2016. did you hear the firefighters in new york want to reopen the investigation about 9 11 because they Want to hear about the bombs that were set all over the building? Oh, because no. you know that's how that shit went down. Yeah, I about that. Oh, possibly. Wow. Like I, I always thought uh, the latest thing that I saw in it was like the cold energy weapon or something like that, and uh, that cold. Like when it comes to me in the September 11th, uh, 
It was the people that were responsible for it and our own government. Because like yep. that, that, that's like the way I actually do see September 11, 2001. And I think they were involved in the Oklahoma City bombing. Them two white boys, they make that crap up. <laughs> Ain't no way. And they, they uh, killed Timothy McVeigh quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I, mean, I heard there was, was some kind of paperwork in there. Mm-hmm. Somebody wanted to get... And that's a damn shame. That was a daycare center in that building. I'll never forget that picture of that firefighter carrying that Tyler out of that building. Yeah. Christian, uh, Greg Jarvis said, yeah, it was Bush that said that. And Mega Zog failure said, Bush said he prayed about it before going into Iraq. Obama prayed about uh, it when yeah. ordering a drone strike that would kill women and children. Yeah, that's what it is. Thank you, brother. Uh, yeah. As far as like a false flag attack, man, I wouldn't doubt it, man. I mean, wasn't it WikiLeaks or it might have been like like some of the JFK stuff like I released? They were like planning a false flag attack in Miami to justify an invasion of Cuba. Yeah. I mean, the first... All the way back in the 60s, man. Like, imagine. Yeah. I mean, the first like verified false flag attack, I guess, that a lot of written accounts say was back in... Um... Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, when he started the, I think, Spanish-American War, he was like, hey, we need we need to start a war, I, you know, just that way I can be a war hero and, you know, get into politics, etc. And that's how it happened. It's like they they said, hey, we got attacked by um, by Spain way over in the Philippines or something like that. And that was mm-hmm. like in the late 1800s. Uh, like the last decade of the 1800s, and then that's kind of amped up because, like, Teddy Roosevelt really was just a prominent, you know, person from a wealthy, fa- wealthy class family. Uh, he got with a, a like a editor or you know someone who owned a uh, like a media, a newspaper outlet, and he also got someone uh, from within Congress, and so they were like the new triumvirate. You know, you got someone from media you got someone from you know uh the government and so you know uh teddy roosevelt would go in i think he was in the military so uh he would just go in and uh you know do you know participate in battles and you know the newspaper guy his friend would like amp it up and saying you know get america excited you know so all everyone just says proud of uh Teddy Kennedy and his uh, war efforts and all this other stuff. And yeah. that's how, that's where it all started. You know, there's a false flag event just to invade so he could look good in battle. Cause it's like, nothing's happening. So I'm never going to get into politics if I, if I don't have any battles. So let's, let's make some battles happen. Yeah. And, and Teddy Roosevelt had a very uh, romanticized view of war. I mean, he viewed it as very, um, how would he put it? You know, they tried to do a coup against him. They were trying to poison him. Who oh, are uh, Teddy? Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, he was, um, he uh, introduced, like, breaking up trust, like the breaking up of, you know, big businesses and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yep, they uh, were pissed about that. They were pissed. Oh yeah, hell yeah, they were pissed about that. And then you know when his uh, his nephew came along later on, you know FDR or his cousin, was it cousin or nephew? I always forget. Is it nephew or cousin? I thought, I thought they were cousins. I think I they're think cousins. Th- yeah, I think they were cousins. Um, he expanded upon that further, and they, they didn't like that still, man. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, he was um, – he – I forgot who was the president before he inherited it, but he was the VP. And so he had his first term. It was three years, and then he, he ran as the president. He won. I got a full four years. And he was thinking about running again for the third time back when it was still legal, when it was still allowed. But they had that tradition back then because of 
Washington didn't want to run again for a third term, but that was like the, you know, the unwritten law that you only get two terms as a president, that you're supposed to step down after two terms. But he was already getting ready to argue that, you know, I didn't really have two full terms because I was the VP and the president died. So I only had seven years technically as president. So why not run again? But he didn't. He chose to step down. And then the person, I think it was Taft, that came afterwards. Taft was basically going to be his, you know, his protege and continue all of the same policies and whatnot that mm-hmm. Teddy had established during his two terms of seven years. Yeah. But um, what happened was that he didn't do that. <laughs> and so Teddy, after that cycle, decided, you know what, I'm going to run again. But this time, instead of running as a Republican, for whatever reason, I don't remember, he decided to run as an independent in a third party called the Bull Moose Party. Mm-hmm. And he got he got pretty far, man. He I think he got like a third of a vote, like thirty three percent, something like that. Yeah. Um, so they were fifth cousins, Franklin and Teddy. Uh, fifth cousins. That's what the, I'm getting with search results. And the uh, Grant Driver said it was Franklin Roosevelt was to be poisoned by his portrait painter. It wasn't Teddy. I think it makes more sense for it to be Frank uh, Franklin Roosevelt because of just how long he was running and all the stuff that he was doing, shaking up the uh, the wealthy. The status quo. Yeah, he was. Oh man! And a lot of people believe he stopped the revolution. A lot of people believe that a revolution was coming during the Great Depression, and if it wasn't for FDR and the policies that he enacted that it would have been a revolution. I still say it's all conjecture. <laughs> I mean, conjecture. None of us here can talk to anyone that's still alive to about it. So we all have to go by the books and what they what they're saying. And so it's hard, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, surely. So yeah. who would you vote for, a Democrat or Republican? But I what? Vote for a Republican or a Democrat? I ain't voting for either. Oh, why not? What if it was like um I'm instructing to vote the DNC is still doing the same thing they did in two thousand and sixteen. You think they're they exactly the same? Lesson. Or slightly better or slightly worse? Cause they keep uh I ain't going for lesser two evils either. <laughs> and I ain't do it in two thousand and sixteen. But, but Shoy, do you think it's the same? You think it's gotten better? You think it's gotten worse? That was. Oh, hell no. We're, they just still the same and they got worse. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Look Shit's what they're the doing at Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True. And Bernie. And Bernie calls CNN fake news. I'm like, about time, Bernie. <laughs> they got some balls to say it. Yeah. Yeah. I- have you seen a lot of because I know you still listen to a lot of people you still see a lot of the commentators like pushing for a candidate that's in the DNC well we they all know that they're trying to push Biden because the night of the debates they say Biden won I'm like how the fuck did he win anytime he opened his mouth he dig his grave deeper and deeper. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking about like so the alternative you know, media. They, they, they want him to be the nominee. Right. Yeah. They, uh, they, they, they don't hide it no more. Is, is there any alternative media that you've been watching or listening to that are also on the same boat as us? It's like no more. We know the DNC didn't learn its lesson, so why vote? Oh, yeah. Hashtag ADOS, American Descendants of Slaves. We want the Democrats to start, start talking about reparations. They will get no vote. And, then, and Trump was right to call out Elijah Cummings. His district is jacked up. He got rats and stuff running around there. And then his house happened to get robbed over the weekend, right before Trump tweeted about his district. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Yep. Crazy. And you look at Maxine Waters and Feinstein, what they're, they're called, Poop Nation, because all that homes, all homeless people out there. Yeah, so they're firing back at him. But I'll be right back. 
Right. Yeah, because um, that's that's big now, and they going after black folks now. They trying to take us down off the internet because they say if we tell them y'all help DACA, y'all help G- LGBTQ, mm. and you help the uh, immigrants. You're fighting, and for a lot, the C- the CBC to be fighting for immigrants. Coretta Scott King and Martin Luther King was against that because they take from black and brown jobs. Hmm. And Elijah Cummins crying about how they live in conditions. Are, well, look at your people. And the black folks down there in Baltimore said, I'm glad Trump called his butt out. Because <laughs> they can't even go downtown unless they go to court. Yeah. They can't work down there or anything. I mean, it feels like... like uh... Whenever I look at the statistics or analysis of like the uh, demographics for politics and voters, like the black vote is a big voting block for Democrats. Do you think that's yes, going to make they it? need us, and that's why they want some damn immigrants in here because they want to replace us. Ah. they think they slick. They ain't slick. <laughs> you got to pay for what you did to our people. Because we built that White House. All them damn different presidents went in. But blood, sweat, and tears. And Benjamin, ben- Benjamin Banneker was a black former slave who designed Washington. The old Washington like it was. He was an architect. There's a lot of black inventors. Like, Scientists I- and chemists. If if I was running for president, I, I'd make the reparations happen, and I would get it all, and that would be paid for by the one percent. <laughs> so you get all the one percent's money, and reparations paid for, and it's taking none from the middle class or the poor. So uh, vote for me, and Evan from, Kim. Write it lot, down. And a, and a lot of white people <laughs> say, "Well, that's not our fault. That was our ancestors." But a lot of them made money off of our stuff because we weren't allowed to get patents. Like two black sisters made sanitary napkins. Mm-hmm. They couldn't get patents, but that's a billion dollar business. Yeah, it wasn't I think uh I think NASA, the one who who uh, a mathematician who calculated the trajectory, the uh telemetry uh for the uh moon moon uh, uh the Apollo missions, she was a black woman. Right. Mhm. Yeah. Is that that movie they made? Uh, I haven't seen that movie. I, I don't like watching. Uh, I didn't Papa watch Kano. it because <laughs> I don't believe Hollywood because they put their little spins in it. Yeah. So, but yeah. anyway, um, because like the Statue of Liberty, we were taught wrong on that. They always said that was there for the immigrants. That's a lie. Liberty. A Island. guy from France. Had yeah. had that thing built. He was against slavery, and when the U.S. Uh, freed the slaves, he had that Statue of Liberty made up. I don't know if it's on her right foot or her left foot, but she has broken shankles at <laughs> her feet. That was yep. for freeing slaves. Yeah. <laughs> They, they they lied about our history. They they a lot of us, not even just blacks, we're whites too. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. So when did it take you uh to figure that out, Shirley? <laughs> well, I've been going to black YouTube because it's this guy from Philly. He has a YouTube page yeah. and he do a lot of black inventors and I'm like, Wow, we had doctors, mm-hmm. chemists that invented things, and we don't get no credit for it because we couldn't get a patent. I mean, uh, the color of our skin. I think the person, first person who f- did the uh, open heart surgery stuff was a black person. Yeah, but that's credit. not the right one. The history told us it was someone else. Oh, I forgot oh. his name because you can go to the Smithsonian Institute because mm-hmm. they say if it wasn't for African Americans. This country would not be thriving. That's because we invented a lot of stuff. A yeah. lot. Yep. We invented the um the man white black man invented the extended uh ladder on the fire trucks. He he made the uh fire escape. Mm-hmm. 
the refrigerated trucks that come to our markets and drop off our food. Yeah. Well, yep, they made a lot of stuff. I, I, what, I mean, if if they couldn't vote, I don't think they had rights to patent probably either. So No, they didn't. They yeah. didn't. You guys yeah. got screwed so, over. And even some um, slave owners, <clears throat> they try to get patents using, because somebody made something to do, make doing the gin in the field. He created a uh, invention, <clears throat> and the, the slave owner tried to patent it, and they said, who made this? And he said, my slave. He said, you can't get no patent for this. He made it. Yep. And a black man made the first um, gas mask, because a mine had um, collapsed in Georgia somewhere down the south, and he mm-hmm. came down there and brought the mask for him, and when they found out he invented it, they said, no, we're not using them. They had to go down there with no mask on. <laughs> uh, just silly, silly, crazy people. Yeah, because I learned a lot of history through black YouTube. Because they, this one guy, and it's a shame because it's a lot of black YouTubers, and it only be like twenty five people over there when he be doing these um black inventors. Right. Yeah. And it's a shame. Uh, you would think the SJWs would be all about that, but uh, they seem to not care. <laughs> no, they don't. Yeah, they they're don't. trying to erase our history. That's that's what they're trying to do. They want them immigrants to vote mm. for them. Because I think in Pennsylvania in 2016, I think 500,000 immigrants, illegal immigrants voted for Hillary, and they're just looking for them. They're not going to lock them up or send them back. They're just looking for them and letting them know they can't vote. Well, they should have known that from the beginning. Yeah, but she still lost Pennsylvania. Uh, Puerto Rico. I wonder how Puerto Rico is doing. They're not doing so well. <laughs> no, they're not doing well at all. I mean, they well, just got rid of a well, government. They, oh, they riding over there. Yeah, because that, and that's what we need to do here. Get people to step down. Aren't they still rioting in France? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call it rioting. I would call it protest. Yeah. Yeah, riot. Uh, Rioting is what what the uh, establishment media outlets say. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, what they say. that's yeah. that's Antifa, Antifa. Yeah. Antifa. They be yeah. rioting. Yeah, they're rioters. Yeah. The the news news reporters are probably hiring someone. Hey, I'll pay you five dollars to throw that rock in that window while we're filming, and they go okay. <laughs> So we can't do it. For five bucks and go, there's a rioting going on here. It's like some big Hollywood fucking play. Yeah. That's actually the that... way I actually do treat it. Because I remember there was a protest right out of CNN headquarters. They didn't even fucking cover it. Mm-hmm. Brought you by. I remember the... that, yeah. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Are you guys seeing? They're, they're taking down um, all the articles that. Um, that used to state how uh, WikiLeaks, uh, the the DNC leaks were were leaks from WikiLeaks. They've taken all that. They're taking all that stuff down. Well, everybody know already. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but they're actually so they've actually taken it, taken it down, down for me. Yeah. Because that uh, Russian gate investigation failed. I said, boy, they gave uh, Trump a clean sweep in 2020. Yep, they're just going to go and re-elevate Trump again and make even more fucking money off of it. Yeah, because they'd be fired. I'm like, why do they keep responding to his tweets? A narcissist, you ignore them. Because when they ignore <laughs> you ignore them, they sit home and make their wives or whoever else in the house miserable. Oh, don't do that to Melania. I mean, you got to... I know. <laughs> I feel for her. But uh, that's how they are, because my, my, my aunt went with a boyfriend. He was like that, and she was like, look, I can't talk to you. i got to get a break from you for several days, maybe a week. And he would not, she would not talk to him, and all he would call and call, she wouldn't, he wouldn't answer the phone. He was going crazy. <laughs> and like I said, they just take, giving him their power. That's all they're doing. Yeah. That's all they're doing. And they still want to impeach that majority of the House is voting, have votes to impeach Trump. Impeach him on what? It ain't going to happen. No. And that's the funny part. It's not going to happen. And plus, they're going to get, uh, here's one thing. They're projecting hope off of the voters. 
and setting him up for disaster and disappointment. Just like the 2016 DNC, they're doing the same exact fucking thing, but with more shadier tricks and doubling down. That's yep. all. The, that's all the DNC is doing, and plus the same thing with the RNC as well. I don't even trust them too. I love Kamala Harris when she called out Kamala um, Kamala's record because she said, "Man, this is so much stuff." Tulsi, yeah. She's like, it was so much stuff to talk about because she couldn't even get to the truancy part. Like, Lots of it, poor people for truants because their kids miss school. A lot of them people were homeless, living in the shelter. Yeah. And plus, you know, with the, the school system and the education system, it really does suck. Yes, it does. It was fit by design. Because I remember we had all all vocational programs in school, and you were graded on it. Home economics, welding, auto shop. They took all that stuff out, and they wondered why the kids acted crazy. It's also home, coming from home. But still, you took all that stuff out of school. The, and yeah. in urban areas, they don't have no books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's almost like they take in something that they have constructed and completely de deconstructed. Be like, oh, you have to learn this. Oh, you're required to learn that. And yeah. It, it's like, and they're not gaining any kind of skill off of it. It's like, no, they're and, not. And plus, it's they don't even want to go to school. Exactly. I mean, if I had kids one day, I'd homeschool them. I wouldn't care. I'd be like, um, no, you're not going to public school. I'll homeschool you instead because, you know, you'll get a better education. And, and, and you really don't want to homeschool them because if they go to school, they'll get social skills with other children. That's the thing. You don't want your child to be introverted. Yeah, but I would uh, I would actually take out my you know I would actually have like field trip educations that you you know you can actually go and interact with others. Yeah, because they took that out of school. I remember I learned baking in elementary school. I had a PSFS baking kit. I had oh, to bring wow. money every week to school. They don't have that no more. And I learned swimming when I was in junior high school because you know y'all know black folks don't like to we a lot of us don't know how to swim. But I learned, because my mom had to sign a trip slip when I was in junior high, and we went to the YMCA, and we used those floats, and I learned how to swim. They don't have that stuff no more. You had to, if you took, they took gym out. My son, when he got in high school, they said, you can, you could either choose gym or pick another class. I'm like, since when? Oh, wow. And they talking about why the kid is so fat. Well, you took that out of school, that was mandatory because if you if you always skip a class, at least you had that good grade to pass the gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like with with wow. me, like instead of like taking physical education, like in high school, I actually took um, what you call it class, a uh, a weight training class in order to uh, get my gym credit. Oh, nice. Nice. I wish I would have had that. No, they I mean, ain't offer that. They yeah. offer some other kind of class. Like, uh, you may take Spanish or English. I'm mm -hmm. Like, what kind of crap is this? In my high school, my old high school, they had a great auto body shop. Because my brother uh, worked in there. He got, he got graded on that. And a lot of them kids, when they graduate, they got a school making good paying jobs. Like welding, you got to make some good money welding. Mm -hmm. They don't have yeah. it no more. So no. the kids don't have no hope. Especially if they ain't got none at home. Yeah. I love I used to love going to school. Yeah, now I mean at least when I was going to school it was a bit of a drudgery. It it was hard to, you know, it was kinda of like we went to school because we had to. It's not like we wanted to. Right. And that's a shame. It shouldn't have been like that. And it's just like with my kids growing up, because I told my kids when I grew up, I mean, we partied as, as teenagers. The DJ mm -hmm. would block off a street, and we put out a DJ equipment, we'd be blocking it, and when we move out the way, when the cars come by, the cops didn't bother us. Mm -hmm. They didn't. And now, 
they can't even have a block party because you don't know when a shooting is going to happen. Mm. Yeah. And my aunt can't even go to clubs either. Yeah. It takes... My kids are grown now. Mm -hmm. I worry about my son when he go out every day. Every day. And that's yeah. the worst feeling to have. To have a black son. Mm. Yeah, I mean, my mother, I mean, I'm not black, but my mother worries about me the same way, too, when I go out. Even when I just go out to get groceries. Yeah, because you, I'm brown. You're a brown person. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Well, my mom is very fearful. Uh, but when my mom came to this country, she didn't speak English. and um, She she grew up in a, an Irish neighborhood up in the North Bronx. And she mm -hmm. was bullied a lot. She experienced a lot of racism. And they hated her even more because she looked like them, but she wasn't them. Oh, yeah. Because uh, that, 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 that red hair. A, yeah. yeah. They did blacks like that too when they came here. Because mm -hmm. they were mad that we had jobs and they couldn't get the same pay. Because yeah. um, somebody just, Yvette Carnell just did a, a book, a, some book about how the Irish became white. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, they took us through some changes for blacks and brown people. Yeah, it's, it's been like that with everybody, man. I mean, it's just yeah. like, to the society. It's like they'll divide us up by any means necessary. You know, like if, I've said it before. And have you, have you guys ever noticed that right now, certain movies, they're getting African immigrants from like London and stuff to play our roles? Like this woman playing Harriet Tubman, we're going to boycott that movie because she always say negative things about African Americans. Oh, yeah. She don't even look right playing that role. Harriet Tubman is coming out because a lot of blacks, women, ask when they're going to make that movie because they, they would love to play that role. They could have got Viola Davis to play it. She's at, um, a DOS, America, the city of slaves. Yeah. Why they get her from London? Because see, a lot of them in London can't get jobs. Only one I know that get jobs in London acting is Idris Elvis because he got his own show out there called Luther. Yeah, the um, the acting scene, like the television and the movie scene out in the UK, is is like it's like a it's like a joke compared to Hollywood. I mean, they they're starting to get the now like with shows like what you were saying, like Luther, Sherlock. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they've had Doctor Who for a while, but still, like the production value over there is nothing like over here. I mean, you hear you have these humongous studios that have been around for decades and over there they're just like it really is just theater it still is mostly theater theater is still stronger than the television and the film industry over there yeah but they come, they, the, come the, 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 <laughs> they come over here and yeah. they these buttholes are giving them that our roles black folks and people get, and they talking, because I forgot a couple of male actors was missing in there. Why are they giving these male actors? Like the, it was an Af it was somebody from London. I guess he was from London, but he was an African that played mm -hmm. Martin Luther King in Selma. And they want to know why the movie didn't do so great. He don't know our history. We play them roles. We show the passion because we know what well people have went through. Yeah. Because they don't know. Well, they already was, had this idea. They call us slaves sometimes when they come here. Yeah. Well, anyways, guys, I, I got to go. My phone's like literally about to die. So it was great talking to you guys. Have a great night. Hey, Have Bye. a great weekend. Thank you, you two guys. Bye, Cheryl. Bye. Yep. Have a great you weekend. Well, I'm going to try to do this every Friday. So feel free to join us. Awesome. <laughs> Will do. Awesome. All right. Thank All you, right, Danny, Bob. Greatly again, appreciate it. Right. Yeah. Thanks for coming weekend. on, you guys. Eris, you leaving too? Yup, yup. Yeah, okay. it's getting all late. Leaving? Are we all leaving? Uh, yeah, I think it's a good time to end. It's been almost three hours. Surely you gotta, you gotta get on earlier. <laughs> I know. I washed my hair though. Oh. All right. <laughs> That's why. No problem. You got, you guys got it. Yeah, all right. Never mind. We'll see you guys next Friday. And, all right. We'll uh, do.
Remember, right. vote Democrat because you got to no. fall in line. <laughs> I'm following those lines. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Have a great week, God. Bye. You too. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye.